financial institutions and currencies joined with the Committee on Government Corporations and Public Enterprises, Committee on Ways and Means, and Committee on Finance is hereby called to order. At this point, let me acknowledge the presence of the following members who are virtually present. Uh, Senator uh, Villanueva, Senator Binay, Senator Po, Senator Angara, Senator Revilla, Senator Gachalian, and Senator Angara. With seven members, with seven senators uh, virtually present, I declare the presence of a quorum. May I ask the committee secretary to acknowledge our guests and resource persons attending today? Thank you. Good morning to our dear senators. Good morning to our resource persons. Um, may I acknowledge the presence of, of the following resource persons for today's hearing. From the BSP, Deputy Governor Francis Daquila, Senior Assistant Governor, Gen Governor and General Counsel Attorney Elmer Capule, and our Governor, Dr. Felipe Medalia. From the DOF, Department of Finance, Assistant Secretary Ruth Rosino and Bernabe Jr. From the Land Bank of the Philippines, President and CEO, Ms. Cecilia C. Borneo, and her Executive Vice President, Mr. Karel D. Halog. From the NEDA, are you under Secretary Rosemary Edelion from the Development Bank of the Philippines, Vice President Mr. Rodrigo Jesus V. Mantarin, and his Senior Assistant Vice President Ms. Maria Luisa L. Aguirre Pangilinan. From the Bureau of Treasury, Ms. Rosalia V. De Leon. From the DBM, Undersecretary Joselito Basilio, Mr. Ryan Joseph Kalalang, from GCG, Commissioner Gideon D.V. Mortel, yes, from the OGCC, Assistant Government Corporate Council, Ms. Melissa M. Acorda, from the COA, Ms. Marie Frances Hazel S. Acevedo, Acting Supervising Auditor of the DBP, Ms. Nida A. Singson, Acting Supervising Auditor of the LBP, Ms. Altea Rosas Ladores, Acting Supervising Auditor of the BSP, and Attorney Erwin E. Lapitan, Attorney 6 Legal Affairs Office, Legal Services Sector. From the SEC, Chairman Attorney Emilio Aquino, and Arjun M. Lacanaria, Mr. Rafael Russell Castro, and Romwald Padilla. From the Bankers Association of the Philippines, Mr. Benjamin Castillo, and Mr. Arniel Almaden. From the Assistant Vice, from the PAGCOR, Assistant Vice President, Attorney Arnold Salvosa. Thank you, sir. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Wynne Gachalian. Thank you. Senator oh, and of course, <laughs> Senator, <laughs> Senator Villar, uh, Senator Cynthia Villar, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. Uh, so please allow us to state specific house rules to ensure the orderly and efficient conduct of the hearing. Can the committee secretary inform today's attendees of our house rules? Thank you. Kindly mute your microphone if you are not recognized or do not wish to be recognized. Since the visuals of the online meeting are limited, please inform the chairperson of your inquiry by specifying your name before stating your concern, comment, or position. All data that the resource persons wish to present relative to the subject today may be submitted to the committee secretariat for the consideration of this body. Only one representative per office or organization will be allowed to speak for their respective organizations. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you again for attending this committee hearing and assisting us in understanding the topics to be discussed this morning. 
For today's hearing, the committee will discuss House Bill Number 6608 by House Speaker Romualdez, House Majority Leader Dalipe, Representative Kimbo, and all at all, and Senate Bill Number 1670 by this representation, proposing for an act establishing the Maharlika Investment Fund, providing for the management investment and use of the proceeds of the fund, and appropriating funds thereof. This bill seeks to create a Maharlika investment fund that will be used to invest in programs and projects which may help in generating income and in attaining government economic plans. The Maharlika Investment Fund Corporation shall be established to govern and manage the said fund. I filed Senate Bill Number 1670 in order to open the discussion on this matter. The House approved version is a good start as it already underwent scrutiny in the House of Representatives. In today's hearing, we will be focusing the discussion on the objective, purpose, necessity, and benefits of the Maharlika Bill. We will also examine the management of the funds and the fund sources so that our colleagues in the Senate and the public will be enlightened as to the contents of the bill. We shall ensure but uh, this will be a venue to tackle the various important issues surrounding the subject, this measure, and the matters that need further clarification. We will open up a dialogue so that the Senate and the public can scrutinize this significant measure that may affect the future of our country. We are open to studying suggestions and other proposals or alternatives on the proposed measure. The public may post their comments in the comment box. We have staff who are monitoring your questions and reactions. Please feel free to raise your concerns and questions. We will ask the resource person some questions originating from the public to encourage the public's participation. The Senate, being an independent institution, will perform its duty and responsibility to review and discuss measures affecting national interests. We will not rush. We will take our time in order to arrive at the best version possible for the benefit of the Filipino people. At the end of the day, in considering this piece of proposed legislation, our paramount priority is we must always have the welfare of the people in mind. With that in mind, we proceed to a hearing of the proposed bill for the creation of the Maharlika Investment Fund. May I ask uh, the other senators at this hearing if they have any opening statement prior to discussion? Sen? I'd also like to acknowledge the president's the president. It's the presence of uh, Senator Cheese Escudero. Morning. Thank you. We now proceed with the discussion. In the interest of time and with the permission of my colleagues, we shall finish the presentation first before we ask our questions or seek clarification. We will recognize our colleagues in order of their arrival. Um, who's I call on the economic team uh, to make their presentation on, on the respective positions on the bills that are the subject matter of today's hearing. Please make your presentation succinct, limited to uh, approximately 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Honorable uh, Chairman, if it's okay, uh, may we start with the presentation? Yes, please proceed. Honorable uh, Mike Tillyard, the Chair of the Committee on Banks. Um, also, an Honorable uh, Senator F uh, Francis Escudero, Honorable Senator Sherwin Gachalian, uh, Honorable uh, Senator uh, Cynthia Villar. Uh, good morning to everyone. And of course, Governor Medalla. Ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, with the permission of... Um, um, Leah, may yes. I ask, is this Please going proceed. to be a singular consolidated presentation by the entire economic team? Isa lang? Uh, yes, yes, it will be. So, wala nang ipapresent ang BSP, ang uh, DBM, ang DOF. This is going to be it. Yes. In second query, Mr. Chairman, is this based on any pending measure? Or is this your own version of the bill? This is based on the version of the House and, of course, the version that was submitted by the Senate, by uh, Senator Mark Villar. Are they the same? More or less, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. So, uh, to continue on, um, 
decades ago, it used to be that sovereign wealth funds were exclusive to resource-rich countries such as Kuwait, Norway, and the United Arab Emirates as a means to protect the value and maximize the earnings on revenue surpluses from commodity exports so as to extend its benefits to posterity. Today, however, this is no longer the case. More than 50 countries are now with sovereign wealth funds, many of whom belong to the same level of economic development as the Philippines, such as Indonesia, Vietnam, and Kenya, to, name, to mention a few. Capitalization is no longer exclusive to surplus revenues generated by natural resources, but has now grown to include varying sources, including budgetary contributions, as in the case of the Indonesia Investment Authority. Also, the objective for establishing sovereign wealth funds has broadened to include other economic goals, such as to help stabilize the country's economic base through asset diversification, to limit the effects of capital flows on money supply, to increase returns via international portfolio investments, and to facilitate long-term development. In fact, some countries have more than one sovereign wealth. Ang ano, meron akong mic nito. May party line. More than one sovereign wealth fund to serve different objectives. Singapore, for example, created two distinct funds. One, the GIC, whose objective is to preserve and enhance Singapore's international purchasing power over the long term and is therefore invested heavily on foreign assets, while Temasek, whose economic stability goal is more aligned with holdings of domestic assets. Sovereign wealth funds are no longer defined simply as government-owned vehicles investing their capital overseas. Today, the industry is highly complex with mixed forms of legal structure, ownership, and portfolios. Governments use sovereign wealth funds to meet their particular economic goals, and a fund's objectives can evolve with time to suit the country's needs. The Philippines will greatly benefit from having its own sovereign wealth fund, especially with respect to boosting our long-term economic productivity. Having a sovereign wealth fund will help advance our infrastructure development. Following the example of Indonesia Investment Authority, we can structure a sovereign wealth fund that allows co-investments and partnerships with foreign entities and thereby attract large foreign capital into our high-priority sectors. We can use a sovereign wealth fund to attract the best talents from the private sector and to gain membership in sovereign wealth fund associations that may develop into partnerships with other sovereign wealth funds for local projects. The Philippines, being one of the Southeast Asia's fastest growing economies, has a broad range of physical, financial, and human capital assets. With the country's strong growth coupled with its sustainable development plan and, the, of course, the economic liberalization measures passed by Congress, now is the time to establish the proposed Maharlika Investment Fund. The overall purpose for the establishment of the Maharlika Investment Fund is to optimize the use of government financial assets and promoting their intergenerational management in order to maximize returns and advance the fund's developmental objectives. The specific mandate of the MIF would define the investment strategies through the creation of sub-funds with specific investment and risk management frameworks and investment horizons. A fund with a developmental strategic or objective with a long-term horizon may be created to promote economic development by making strategic and profitable investments. On the other hand, a fund with a commercial objective will obtain optimal absolute return and achievable financial gains on its investments. The Maharlika Investment Fund shall be founded on the Santiago Principles, which identify a framework of generally accepted principles that properly reflect appropriate governance and accountability arrangements, as well as the conduct of investment practices by sovereign wealth funds on a prudent and sound basis. The Santiago Principles seek to ensure that through the pursuit of these practices, the sovereign wealth funds continue to bring economic and financial benefits to home countries, recipient countries, and the international financial system. The following are the key themes embodied in the Santiago Principles. First is the establishment of a governance framework that will allow the fund to fulfill its mandates and achieve its objectives. Second, 
relevant information of the fund should be clear and disclosed publicly. Third, the business processes and systems shall be grounded on clearly defined rules and procedures and must satisfy regulatory requirements. Finally, the fund should target to provide a risk-adjusted operating model. The MIC or the Maharlika Investment Corporation shall be created as a corporate vehicle for the purpose of mobilizing and utilizing the Maharlika Investment Fund to make investments that will maximize returns and contribute to the sustainable economic growth of the country. The initial capitalization of the MIC shall be sourced from the Land Bank of the Philippines and the Development Bank of the Philippines. Land Bank shall invest 50 billion pesos and DBP shall contribute 25 billion pesos. Each government financial institution may increase its investment above the required equity contribution and they shall be entitled to prudential and other regulatory reliefs as may be determined by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to ensure their financial soundness while contributing to the overall objective of the fund. In addition, subsequent annual contributions from GOCCs and other sources to the fund shall be provided as follows. For the first two years, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas shall remit 100% of its declared dividends to the fund. In the succeeding years, the BSP shall remit 50% of its declared dividends to the fund and the remaining 50% to the national government until the increase in the BSP's capitalization has been fully paid. Thereafter, BSP shall remit 100% of its declared dividends to the fund. Moreover, PAGCOR and other government-owned gaming operators shall contribute at least 10% of gross gaming revenue streams. Lastly, other sources of funding shall include royalties and special assessments on natural resources based on the fiscal regime to be implemented by the national government, proceeds from privatization of government assets, and public borrowings. To ensure that the fund will be able to grow, withdrawals from the fund shall be made only after the at least five years of investment activities. The notice period for any withdrawal is one year or shortened as determined by the board. The capital of the MIC shall not be, be withdrawn if its effect would be to diminish the MIF to an amount less than the real value of the MIF at, at its inception. To ensure the sustainability of the fund, sound and credible investment and risk management strategies shall be developed. The board shall ensure that policies formulated are consistent with the objectives of the fund and this shall be subject to periodic reviews. The investment strategy shall take into account the expectations for returns and the fund's risk tolerance around specific activities like co-investments. Moreover, with the investment strategy, there shall be a clear method for determining performance, not just at the portfolio level, but also for the asset class and even at the individual investment level. In order to prudently manage the fund's risk, it shall focus on generating sustainable risk-adjusted returns over the long term, uh, properly identify and manage risks, ensure the resilience of its balance sheet, and finally, the MIC can look into investments in emerging megatrends such as uh, fintech, ESG, and healthcare. The following shall serve as allowable investments of the fund subject to strict compliance with investment and risk management guidelines. Cash, foreign currencies, metals, and other tradable commodities, fixed income instruments issued by sovereigns, quasi-sovereigns, and supranationals, domestic and foreign corporate bonds, Listed or unlisted equities, whether common, preferred, or hybrids, Islamic investments such as sukuk bonds, joint ventures or co-investments, mutual and exchange-traded funds invested in underlying assets, commercial real estate and infrastructure projects, loans and guarantees to or participation into joint ventures or consortiums with Filipino and foreign investors, and other investments as may be approved by the board. As for governance, the MIC shall be governed by a board of directors with 15 members chaired by the Secretary of Finance. Other members include the CEO of the MIC, the President and CEO of Land Bank and DBP, six regular members representing the contributors to the fund, 
with the seats distributed in proportion to their corresponding investments, and five independent directors from the private sector, the academe, business sector, and the investment sector. The rules on appointment and termination of the board of directors shall be included in the implementing rules and regulations. An advisory body will be established to advise and assist the board of directors in the formulation of the general policies related to investment and risk management. The advisory body shall not take part in the management or control of the fund. It shall be composed of the Secretary of the Department of Budget and Management, the Secretary of the National Economic and Development Authority, the President of the Philippine Stock Exchange, and the President of the Bankers Association of the Philippines. In addition, a risk management unit shall be organized by the board, which shall ensure that the MIC is taking the appropriate measure to achieve a prudent balance between risk and reward in both ongoing and new business activities. It shall be composed of five members. There will be one professional with proven competence and experience in finance, economics, investment, business management, or law, two senior executives of the MIC, one independent director, and one auditor. On exemptions and privileges, under the proposed bill, the MIC shall be granted exemptions from specific regulations to ensure operational efficiency and independence. The MIC shall be exempted from the GOCC Governance Act of 2011, except for sections of the said law on the fiduciary duties of the board and officers, full disclosure, and special audit. This is in consideration of the need for flexibility to operate, function, employ, and retain employees to ensure the successful implementation of the goals of the MIC. The following transactions and assets of the MIC and the MIF exempt from local and national taxes, direct and indirect, as well as custom duties, include all funds, assets, and properties, all revenues, income, or investment earnings, as well as accruals thereto, the purchase of supplies, equipment, papers, or documents, and the importation of supplies and equipments. The exemptions granted shall be utilized directly, exclusively, and solely for the transactions of the MIC and the MIF as distinct legal entities and not for the purposes of its executives, employees, third parties, and other distinct taxable entities. Moreover, the procurement or engagement of the professional or technical services needed in the selection of authorized investments shall be exempted from the provisions of the Government Procurement Reform Act and its implementing rules and regulations. The competitive selection process and guidelines for the procurement of professional and technical services shall be approved by the MIC Board. To attract the highly qualified pool of Filipino professionals, both locally and overseas, the officers and employees of the MIC shall be exempt from the Salary Standardization Act. Their compensation shall be set based on an objective classification consistent with international standards for compensating investment management professionals managing global assets. On the distribution of net profits of the MIC, at least 25% shall be distributed for poverty and subsistence subsidies. The remainder shall be remitted to the national government for earmarking for social welfare programs and projects, excluding infrastructure projects, provided that the share of the net profits remitted to the national government shall not exceed the proportion of investments to the total fund attributable to the national government. Financial reporting and audit measures are also in place to ensure transparency and accountability. First, financial reporting shall be in accordance with the pertinent provisions of the Act, the IRR, and the International Financial Reporting Standards and Principles. Second, there will be an internal audit independent from the management of the MIC and shall be under the direct control and supervision of the Board of Directors. Third, there will be an internationally recognized auditing firm that shall serve as the external auditor of the fund to examine its financial statements. Fourth, the books and accounts of the MIC shall be subject to the examination and audit of the Commission on Audit. Fifth, there will be a joint congressional oversight committee composed of five members each from the House of Representatives and the Senate, which shall be tasked to oversee 
monitor and evaluate the implementation of this act. Your Honours, the Maharlika Investment Fund has the potential to contribute to the strong growth trajectory of the Philippines through investments in the country's critical developmental projects. Not only will this promote the effective intergenerational management of the country's financial resources, but more importantly, to improve the welfare of future generations of Filipinos. Ultimately, the Philippines will benefit from a well-structured, robust, and effective sovereign wealth fund as this will serve as a long-term investment vehicle that will attract foreign investments, boost national savings, and advance economic growth and social, social development. As we support the creation of this measure, we shall continue to work in hand-in-hand hand hand with Congress to ensure the passage of the best version of the Maharlika Investment Fund. Thank you, uh, and maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. At this point, I'd like to acknowledge the, president, the presence of uh, Senator Amy Marcos. And at the same time, I'd also like to uh, recognize the governor of the BSP, uh, to make an opening statement, Dr. Felipe Medalla. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator uh, Amy Marcos, Senator Chis Escudero, uh, Senator Wynga Chalian, and Senator Cynthia Villar, and the uh, senators who are virtually present, I think they are Senator Spo, Binay, Rivilla, Villanueva, and Angara. Good morning. The BSP supports the objectives of the Senate Bill number 1670 or the Mahardika Investment Fund Act filed by Senator Mark Villar. The legislative measure proposes to establish an MIF, an independent fund that adheres to the principles of good governance, transparency and accountability, and promotes economic development and other objectives to develop the economy. But in particular, we support the provisions that explicitly mentions the BSP. In particular, the contribution that the, the, the dividends declared by BSP, uh, how the dividends of BSP will be disposed of, and them going uh, to the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Uh, this postpones the buildup of uh, the capitalization of BSP, but at this point, our balance sheet uh, is quite good and we could easily uh, uh, take the postponement. We also support the, the provisions that uh, say that we can extend regulatory relief. We may extend regulatory relief to the DBP and the uh, Land back of the Philippines. Uh, some critics may say that it gives undue advantage to land bank and DBP relative to private banks, but one must be aware too that land bank and DBP are also quite restricted by their mandates and don't really directly compete very much with the private banks. So we do not see that as a major competition problem. So we think. Uh, the Senate for giving this speech. Okay. So we, we thank. Okay, what's happening? Okay, we thank the Senate for giving the BSP the opportunity to share our insights on this land back uh, legislation. The BSP believes that this measure requires a whole of government approach, great focus and proper implementation to, to achieve its objectives. Rest assured that the BSP will steadfastly fulfill its role uh, in delivering uh, its mandates, uh, which we refer to as our three pillars. Uh, thank you very much uh, 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 for this opportunity to uh, present our, our views uh, on the MIF. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Governor uh, Medalla. Uh, at this point, if there are no, if there's no, uh, I understand we, the, the, our uh, resource persons would, uh, were willing to proceed to the discussion forum, unless there's someone who would like, who would still like to make an opening statement. No. Uh, I'm sorry, Chairman, can I be excused? Uh, Deputy Governor 
Dakila and uh, assist, Senior Assistant Governor uh, Elmer Kapulik and actually answer many of the questions, if any. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. I'd also like to acknowledge at this point uh, the presence of uh, Senator Ontiveros. Morning, Chair. Good morning. And of course, uh, online, uh, Senator Mentel. So thank you very much. Uh, at this point, we'd like to um, start the discussion proper, and uh, the senators would be recognized uh, in order of attendance. So please uh, signify your attention to the to the to the secretariat if you would like to ask uh, any questions. So I'd like to start by asking. Uh, I, I'd like you to start on a line of questioning regarding. Um, sorry. I'm sorry. She's here. Hey, sorry. Uh, before we proceed, sorry. Uh, Secretary Pangandaman has an opening statement as well. So before you proceed, please proceed with the opening statement. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, uh, Committee Chair, uh, Senator Mark Villar. Uh, our good Senator, Senator Risa Ontivero, Senator Francis Escudero, Senator Aimee Marcos, Senator Wynne Gachilian, and Senator Cynthia Villar. Uh, good morning. And on behalf of Budget Secretary Amena Pangandaman, we at the Department of Budget and Management thank you for this opportunity to share with you why, from the budget perspective, we believe that the Maharlika Investment Fund deserves to be considered uh, for, for legislation. The economic team has been closely and thoroughly studying the cost and benefits of the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Aside from our own research, we have also been consulting various uh, financing and research institutions, such as the Milken Institute, which released its report just a few days ago. Based on the studies, it is our conclusion that the establishment of a Sovereign Wealth Fund can truly help us achieve our agenda for, for prosperity. Um, Mr. Chairman, forgive me. Um... Earlier, I inquired if there was going to be a singular presentation by the entire economic team with respect to the version they want to defend before this committee. I don't see the need really for each and every department to say that they're in favor of this measure, given that I presume that you are. Yeah. Um, maybe a request instead, forgive me, um, Yusek um, Basilio, to just submit to the committee members whatever individual position paper the respective um, uh, members of the economic team may, may have DBP has submitted, Land Bank has submitted for our consideration so as to save on time. Thank you, thank you Senator. Uh, you're correct. Uh, you mentioned earlier the, there is one presentation, although some of them, some uh, departments signify their intention to make an opening statement, uh, not a presentation. But nevertheless, I agree with your uh, uh, motion that uh, we can submit. So if there's no objection, may we request that the uh, respective resource uh, persons and uh, the departments they represent just submit their opening statements for the record, if that's acceptable to, unless there's no any objections. So, that being said, the motion is carried. So at this point, we can uh, proceed with the uh, uh, with the uh, discussion proper, which again will be uh, on order of arrival. So I'd just like to start. I have a few. As I'd like to start, and I'd like to ask a few questions. Uh, my line of questioning is regarding the uh, the. The foreseen benefits of the Maharlika bill. Uh, I, with the president, I was in an event recently where the president mentioned that uh, there's a group of, um, there's a small group of uh, countries called the VIP that are, and that's uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines, who are some of the uh, economic uh, where countries who are deemed as uh, some of the economic uh, tigers or upcoming strong economic countries. Um, can I ask if all of these, uh, these three VIP, do they have a, uh, a sovereign wealth fund uh, currently? Vietnam and in Indonesia, they have sovereign wealth funds, Your Honor. So we are the only ones without one. That's right correct. now, yes, sir. 
Uh, would you know any? Would you have any um, statistics on the performance of either of these funds, that whether it be Indonesia or uh, Vietnam? Would, do we have any idea on how? Uh, Can how I they... speak on our records? Sir? Yes, yes, please. Uh, Your Honor, in the case of Indonesia, it's called the Indonesia Investment Authority. So the initial capitalization was $5 billion. And um, right now, the assets under management is about $6.8 billion. Um, the recorded net profits in 2021 was about $15.4 uh, million uh, dollars, but uh, because it only started in 20, actual operations only started in 2021, um, but it was able to generate already co-investments in the amount of about $20.5 uh, billion. Uh, $20 billion. Yes. Uh, these are from uh, a private, these are from uh, uh, sovereign, other sovereign funds, or are they from private placements? Um, this included <laughs> also, uh, they were able to scale up their uh, capital with partnerships from overseas global infrastructure funds as well and of course are uh, their own investments in their domestic uh, markets so so in other words these uh, these uh, sovereign wealth funds were able to generate uh, additional equity to be invested in local government local uh, projects be it infrastructure or other investments you're correct your honor uh, and, and and if I may also add, not only in terms of additionality in terms of capital, but of course the transfer of technology and knowledge in running, uh, of course, the infrastructure fund itself, and of course in the development of the in, um, uh, economy and of course the implementation of infrastructure projects. So, do you see the Maharlika Investment Fund as a uh, means also to attract foreign uh, foreign capital, foreign equity in the Philippines? Definitely, uh, Mr. Chair. And um, just to cite an example, maybe uh, there's a correlation because recently when we issued our last uh, sovereign bond, we were able to have an order book of $28 billion for an issuance of $2 billion. So that means that there's a lot of interest in the Philippines. Uh, just for the information of the public, uh, what are the advantages of equity? When we talk about equity versus debt, uh, we, can, we can fund our projects through debt, which is, of course, borrowing equity. Uh, maybe you can enlighten maybe the public also on the differences between equity and uh, debt. Of course, debt, sir. Very briefly. Sir, of course, in debt, we have to repay it. But in terms of the equity, they have the skin in the game, meaning to say they are uh, in the project, in the in the investment itself. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a long-term uh, horizon that they're also looking. But um, in the case of the Philippines, while, um, you know, we can also issue debt in the in the long uh in in terms of long term tenors like um the ones that we have issued before it's in, in the tenor of ten and twenty five years and we've seen a lot of appetite you know from overseas investing in, in the in the credit of the Philippines. So Mr. if it's Chair? yes yes yeah, is yeah yes yeah, so just a quick uh, interjection Mr Chair for the record okay, if I sure, may sure, sure. dahil nabanggit na rin po kanina ni National Treasurer De Leon yung uh, Indonesian Sovereign Wealth Fund or yung INA, um, maybe it will be interesting to discuss later in the hearing or in future hearings. Among other important points, may mga importanteng pagkakaiba yung INA at saka yung proposed Maharlika Wealth Fund, particularly in terms of the composition of the boards at saka in terms of yung qualifications ng CEO at CIOO. So just for the record at this point in time, Mr. Chair, salamat po. Yes, thank you, Senator. I think that's a very good point that uh, we can compare and see. At least we've had the, with, at least uh, we can learn from their experience with their sovereign wealth fund. So thank you very much, Senator, and I think that'll be a very good point that as we tackle down the road. So continue my line of questioning. As you mentioned earlier, uh, the difference very basic about equity and debt. So you're saying that uh, this bill, in a way, will will improve can can uh, improve our fiscal situation in the country as it will reduce our it could potentially reduce the debt that we would from DPWH. I know we have foreign funded projects, so this could potentially reduce the debt of the Philippine the Philippine government. 
Tama po, uh, because uh, eventually, then there would also be some already, um, instead of the national government borrowing for these uh, infrastructure projects, there can already be some take up by the fund or some other uh, private ventures would also be co-investing in the fund to be able to implement and execute these projects. Now, otherwise, dapat po, national government ang mag implement uh, That's good. I think that that's a good point to establish that actually it's not a, this can actually improve our fiscal situation. Uh, uh, and it would allow us to have a mechanism to utilize debt instead of just borrowing and borrowing to finance a lot of our infrastructure projects. So I think that's a very good point. And I, I won't, uh, of course, uh, you know, I won't. Uh, there are a lot of people who, a lot of senators who are who have questions to ask. So I just like to uh, uh, end this line of questioning uh, by Mr. asking, Chairman, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, on this point. Um, given the point raised by the chairman, if I may yes, um, please, make a, a brief interjection. One, Mamlea, yung gain sa Indonesia Investment Fund, is it paper gain? Or did they actually realize the profit and use the money gained to invest in somewhere, somewhere else? No, uh, realized gains po yon. So it's actual... Uh... Realized meaning nalabas nila yung pera. Opo, nagamit at na-roll over pa po yung pera, nagamit pa po, napaikot po yung pera. Second, a cursory reading of the bill, um, given the distinction between equity and debt raised by the chairman, um, wala akong nakita sa bill na may parte ang land bank at DBP or PAGCOR as corporations from the net profit. So essentially, para mong pinwera sa yung dalawang banko, even PAGCOR, to give money, walang nakita, wala akong nakita sa bill ha, na may share sila on their investment. So we're like hardballing Land Bank and DBP to give money to this fund without saying anything in the bill with respect to the return on their investment as a cost bago yung net profit na 25%, di ba, na ibibigay sa national government for social welfare projects, etc., etc. So if that is the case, given that the bill is silent, is this an interest-free borrowing from land bank and DBP, unless, of course, ma'am, you will clarify later on that DBP and land bank should have a respectable ROI, given that you will be exempting them later on, as I understand, um, from BSP, from the capital regulatory requirements insofar as the investments of the bank are concerned. So would that be happening in the future, ma'am, as we go through this bill? Otherwise, it will be in an interest-free debt. How would you like to respond? May, um, yes, Mr. Chair, I think, um, well, maybe po in sa bill would need further clarification. Kasi po yung carve out na 25% would really just uh, accrue dun sa investment ng national government. Yung pong contribution. So, definitely, eventually po, uh, there would also be some dividends that would also be declared uh, sa land bank, sa, sa DBP because of their contributions to the fund. Ma'am, the bill is completely silent on it. Shouldn't there be something written there already? In fact, even in the comments of DBP and Land Bank, they brought that up. Na walang sinasabing return sa kanila. Second, ma'am, the composition of the board itself does not reflect the capital contribution of the entities giving the money. Bakit may private sector isang boto? Bakit yung Secretary of Finance may isang boto? Although he chairs Land Bank, of course. Pero yung total na perang i-contribute, sabihin na natin 100 billion. If 50 billion came from land bank, hindi ba ordinary corporate governance as you want to use, 50% of the board should come from land bank. Um, from land bank. Kung 25% galing sa DBP, dapat 25% galing sa DBP. Hindi yung kung saan saan hinugot na wala namang capital contribution. You're assuming the private sector will invest. You already gave private sector representation, but they're not yet investing. Um, so again, ma'am, I'm trying to protect the interest of the bank here and trying to figure out if this is really equity or we're simply forcing the hand of both DBP. Of course, they cannot say no. Both DBP and Land Bank cannot say no. But at some point in time, ma'am, we should give them something by way of return and ROI. Hindi naman pwedeng wala. Senator, if I can, uh, maybe I can, if I can also be permitted to finish my line of questioning. <laughs> yes. Um, Yes, um, but I think uh, Senator makes a very good point, perhaps regarding um, 
you know what what the expectations are regarding your investment in the funds, and that's something that should be clear. So before I continue my line of questioning, perhaps you can respond to Senator Escudero's uh, question from the land bank and DBP perspective. May I? Yes, please, ma'am. Yeah. Good morning, um, Chairman uh, Mark Villar. Good morning to the honorable senators. Uh, actually, the point uh, raised by Senator Escudero is part of our comments and the bill as your office requested for our comments. Uh, we actually uh, suggest an uh, Article 2, Section 6 of the draft bill to uh, indicate the ROI of our, the return of our investment uh, in the MIC or MIF as being contemplated. Uh, if it's not uh, an absolute percent, uh, maybe it should be like a formula or can be referenced to the current average ROI being already enjoyed by the bank from their regular investments. Yes, thank you. Actually, this was going to go into my next question, which is I wanted to uh, end my line of questioning with uh, uh, with a request. If we can have specifics on the returns, because we talk a lot about downside, but I want to know what are I want to know more or less what are ex our expectations in terms of the benefits of this uh, the Maharlika Fund. Uh, you know, we've you mentioned earlier about the other funds and what their performance was. I, I'd like to know if there are any statistics regarding or any uh, projections regarding what sort of returns the the government uh, and the banks can hope to achieve from putting their money into Maharlika. Do we have any uh, any uh, possible statistics regarding that? Yes, please proceed, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. Uh, before um, to add uh, inter and interject to the. Uh, uh, issues raised by Senator Escudero. Um, Attorney Mortel uh, from the uh, GCG, the uh, DBP and Land Bank are under our coverage. And I noticed that in the proposed bill in Section 30, uh, it is also our concern that given the uh, um, uh, insights raised by Senator Escudero, uh, DBP and Land Bank will be, having, uh, will be uh, doing some explanation exactly what happened to their investment because it will be part of their scorecards every given year. But in section 30 of the, uh, 36 rather, of the uh, bill, I think it's somehow covered the same, but it has to make some uh, further clarification, which uh, explains that the profits and losses of the MIC shall be recognized in its books. So uh, this provision can cover that part, but uh, there will be a need to uh, some, um, um, guidelines to clarify the matter, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, so going back to my question also, is there any, do we have projections yet regarding that? Or perhaps you can submit to the committee uh, some uh, some uh, financial projections for the Maharlika Fund. I mean, obviously, it's not, uh, you know, it's nothing set in stone, but I mean, perhaps projections on what sort of returns we can achieve also. Recognizing, of course, that the difference between equity and debt is that there's really a fixed amount that you are uh, committing to return. Of course, the risk appetite for equity is slightly higher, but of course, you have a share of the upside when that comes. So, I mean, recognizing that point that there's a, that that is the exact that is exactly the difference between equity and debt is that debt guarantees a certain return, but you don't have a share of the upside. Whereas equity, they do not guarantee a set return, but you have an upside in exchange for which you assume a little more risk. So, I mean, that's part of the risk management of any financial institution. So, I'll end this uh, line of questioning by asking if you can submit a, uh, some projections for the uh, potential benefits of the Maharlika Fund for the country and for the investors who will be putting their money in there. So, thank you very much. Um, at this point, I'd like to acknowledge in order... Uh, uh, so please, uh, I call also for the Secretariat to take note of the points raised by Senator Escudero and Senator Ontiveros so that uh, we, can, we can also uh, include these in our discussions and, of course, um, address these concerns when we, as we deliberate the bill. So at this point, I'd like to recognize, uh, in order of arrival, our, um, our esteemed senators. Uh, first, I'd like to ask, uh, recognize Senator uh, Wynga Chalian. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm willing to yield to Senator Scudero. I think he uh, made a good point just to 
just not to disrupt the chain of thought of the discussion. So I'm yes, uh, Senator uh, Senator Escudero, Senator Gacharian yields to you. So please, uh, <laughs> please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, yeah. No. Um, let me begin at the beginning. I just interjected on the point given earlier by the good chairman. Um, I don't know who to address the question to since, Leah, you made the presentation. Can I address the questions to you? Um, <laughs> what is the main objective of this fund? I've heard so many things from so many people that has changed so many times. So once and for all, ano ba yung gusto nating objective dito? We generate earnings via the investment fund in order to do what? Please. First of all, sir, um, of course, we, ha we want to do a lot of things, the national government. But right now, we are constrained because we have very limited resources. But we're saying also, now, we can tap naman from other sources. So, like uh, in the case of Land Bank and DBP, right now, they have these investable funds that we call. And that's about uh, $1.3 trillion in the case of Land Bank. Um, Ma'am Cecil, please correct me. Uh, that's correct, uh, Treasurer Leia. Yes, ma'am. I, I know that. So, uh, in the case of uh, DBP, they have about $800 billion na investable fund. Mm. So we're just carving a very small portion of that. In the case of land bank po, uh, less than 4%. Forgive me, ma'am. You're not answering my question. Yeah, uh, what, uh, do we, what, what is your objective? What do you want to accomplish when we invest these funds? So um, we'd like to do more of the infrastructure projects. Of course, we have our PPP. We have also our national government projects. Ma'am, to cut you short, uh, the bill of Senator Villar says, accept infrastructure project. Nakalagay dito. <laughs> Section 30. Yes. Yung sa profits. Yung sa profits. I'm not talking about the investments yet. Ah. Yung kikitain natin dito, saan nyo gagamitin? Yung kikitain... Una po, yung, yung una pong pondo, pwede pong gamitin for more infrastructure projects at hindi lang po infrastructure projects. But no, po, yung pondo. Opo. Yung kita. Yung kita okay, ngayon po, dapat lilinisin muna natin to be able to provide for the contributions ng Land Bank at DBP. As Although as wala pa ngayon sa bill, okay. gagawin pa lang natin. So, medyo tatang para makabal, may balik po sa kanila. Mm -hmm. Ngayon po, may sobra. And then, of course, yung pong sobra, 25% of that na nag accrue sa national government contributions, ilalagay po natin for the social services, uh, mga healthcare projects. And, and this could also be additional, no? Para at the same time, mas makakaluwag po sa budget, uh, sa fiscal space po natin ng national government. Ma'am, social welfare projects, it says in, our, in section 35, excluding infrastructure projects. Hindi po. So yung kita, hindi gagastusin sa infrastructure. Puro social welfare, lahat ng kita. 25%, sir, na kinakarve out. Mm -hmm. Yung po, ilalagay sa social projects, sa so mga social amelioration projects natin. Yung balance, eh, Yung balance, na 75%, ng, ng MIC, Pwede pong i-retained earnings na po yun, di ba, ng, ng MIC. Hindi ko alam. Oh, Hindi nakalagay dito. Mag-retained mag earnings. Sir, so, ordinary ano po, business operations that will form part of the retained earnings. So, pwede po yung paikutin para then it can again be leveraged para magkaroon po ng mga po investments, ng joint ventures. Um, nakalagay po sa Section 35. Doon pa lang muna tayo. 25% of the net profits shall be for poverty alleviation projects provided the remainder of the net profits shall be remitted to the national government earmarked for social welfare programs excluding infrastructure projects. So that seems to counter what you're saying that 25% of net profits will be for social amelioration projects and the remaining 75 is retained? Ang sinasabi po dito, the remaining of the net profits shall be remitted to the national government. Walang sinasabing retained earnings po sa Section 35. Uh, siguro, sir, baka that is something that we need to clarify in the bill. Kasi po, uh, 
definitely, sir, yung hindi naman po pwedeng lahat kung hindi po contributions ng national Agree. government po yun, mapupunta pa sa national government. Agree. So, I'm sure na um, meron pong other uh, investors that they would also want to get their money back. Forgive me, ma'am. I'm basing my questions on the bill itself and not on what is not written on the bill. Uh, if, it, if you seek to add to it later on, then perhaps... Yes, sir. Um, the economic team can suggest the corresponding changes to address these, um, these um, concerns. Now, on the actual fund, net profits tayo kanina eh. Saan natin i-invest? Securities? Pwede po. Yeah, meron pong uh, listing dito, yung allowable investments. Nakita ko nga. Opo. Um, securities, bonds, di ba? Opo. And infrastructure projects. Now, also. we're headed into a recession. Worldwide, globally. Are you considering that point? Are we headed towards a recession globally? In... Well, there are uh, analysts saying that the, there would be recession in some of the advanced countries. But in the case of the Philippines, our view is that we'll not be in that position. Yes, ma'am. But globally, nga, it, po, we will yes, be affected by the recession that's looming and coming. Now, that's not necessarily bad because in a recession, if there bloodbath sa stocks, now is the time to buy. Why not? Now is a good time to invest. But my question, ma'am, is when will we reap the benefits? Usually, if stocks are low, then it takes about, in a recession, global recession, it'll take about two to three years to recover. So, kikita tayo in two to three years kung mag invest tayo sa stocks. Now, when you, when you talk of bonds, when you talk of um, debt instruments, again, if we discuss it later on, DBP and um, Land Bank would want their respective ROI. Um, I think it's DBP that owns the ERPs to MRT, right? Both? And you're earning how much? 18? 12% this time. Overall. So, if it's at 12%, and I presume, magkano yung portfolio nyo, magkano ROI nyo sa portfolio nyo for the past year? Ballpark. Uh, our portfolio, investment portfolio, uh, Senator Scudero, is 1.3 trillion, and our average uh, return on that investment in 2022 was 3.73 percent. 3.76. And on the part of elite naman, 3.76. Sir, 73. Ilan? 3.76 on the part of DBP. Uh, Your Honor, on the part of DVP, it's close to 7%. 7%? A return on equity, sir. Yes. My question, ma'am, is if you ask, ask now DBP, at the very least, that will be their basis. So isn't that like borrowing from them to the tune of the guaranteed supposed rate of return on their investment in other investments? So whether it's at 3.7 or 7%, um, to be so as not to be unfair to them, diba? we should guarantee at the very least roughly those amounts. Kahit habaan pa natin yung period for the last five years, last three years, and let's average it off. At the very least, can that be placed in the bill? Sir, to be fair to them. Yeah. Actually, sir, um, if they invest it in the GS right now at five years tenor, it's about uh, almost 6%. So, yun palang po. higher. Panalo na sila. Ngayon, sa PAGCOR, wala naman silang ini-investan, di ba? Puro out yun eh. Yun, pwede kang maglaro siguro ng ROI nila. But in so far as Land Bank and DBP is concerned, we have to give them um, a respectable rate of return guaranteed based on the... Pwede nga, sabi mo nga, pwede sa GS, um, 6% at the very least. Would that be fair? Yes. Yes po, dahil GS lang, very conservative. Yes, exactly. Next question, ma'am. Um, Mr. Shai, I'll just have three points. We, we will have several hearings anyway. Next question, ma'am. I discussed this earlier. Paano yung composition ng board? Bakit isa lang ang representative ng land bank? Kung target natin is 100 billion, ano ba yung capitalization na tinitingnan nyo ng Maharlika Investment Fund? How much is the capitalization? Sir, for the seed, so meron pong 75 billion from uh, DBP and Land Bank. Tapos po, uh, right now, if we will just base it on dun sa BSP, the first two years nila, and base if it's the dividend last year of about 17 billion, 
Tapos po, meron pong pag-core na yung, again, if you based on the dividend, so more or less mga 100 billion po, 100 billion pesos. Ma'am, I agree with the more or less 100, but we are organizing this corporation by virtue of a law, not under the corporation code. Right, ma'am? Tama po. Hindi ba dapat may capitalization yung batas? This does not have any. It simply talks of the contribution of land bank, of DBP, 10% ng PAGCOR, baka may mag-invest ng private sector. I mean, that it's a law, it's not an excuse not to have a capitalization, authorized capitalization requirement. The, the bill does not, both versions, both the House and the Senate. So what would be, para kung mag increase tayo ng capitalization, di ba? hindi yung decision lang ng board, hindi naman IRR lang, like with any other corporation, they should go through the process since this is mandated by law. Ia amend yung batas just like the BSP charter. Di ba? Nung increase tayo ng capitalization ninyo, we had to amend the law. The same is true here. Kindly provide for a specific authorized capital of the MIF. And going to the composition, kung 100 billion yung nalagay nyo, ma'am, Grand Bank, 50 billion. Again, um, Attorney Mortel, I think, will agree with me that if the capital contribution of land bank is 50%, prudence and practice to protect their investment would dictate that 50% of the members of the board should come. Ganun naman yung corporation, di ba? 50% ng capital galing sa akin, edi 50% ng board akin. Section 25% ng capital galing sa DBP, 25% galing sa kanila. Um, where did this formula come from? Um, now, if you want proper corporate governance, hindi ba tama lang na land banks should have the proportional representation in the board to their investment so that they can protect their investment? Same is true for DBP. Same is true for PAGCOR. Same is true for private individuals. In fact, you allocated already representation for pri future private investors na wala pa naman silang binibigay na pera. Why will they have one vote similar to Land Bank who contributed 50 billion? Isn't that, to say the least, unfair? Isn't that going against basic corporate governance and practice? Ma'am, please. Uh, sir, sa Section 19 po, nakalagay, um, so we have yung 15-member board, um, yung Secretary of Finance, mm -hmm. tapos po yung CEO na MIC, yung um, president, uh, tapos yung Land Bank and DBP, mm -hmm. and there would be six regular members representing the contributors to the fund, which are really uh, Land Bank and DBP, in accordance with the proportion of their corresponding investments. So, so baka... Ma'am, sa six lang nag apply yung proportional contribution nila, hindi sa 15? Ganun ba yan? Unang beses ko yata makarating ng korporasyon na ganyan. <laughs> na meron kang cap kung ano mag, saan mag apply lang investment. Now, let's, let's, let's take your word for it, for example. Kung 50% ang land bank, 25% ang DBP, to understand saan nanggaling yung hindi natin sinunod sa isang korporasyon, yung capital contribution ng investors. And since we do not know yet how much the 10% of PAGCOR will be, um, bibigyan mo pa sila ng share dun sa 6. And then the private sector are given 5. You don't even know. I mean, sige may independent director, but may academe. Nagbigay ba si academe? Si private sector na pipiliin niyo kung sino man negosyante siya, nagbigay ba siya? Did he invest? There must be some rhyme and reason behind it why we're choosing the people to sit there. The Secretary of Finance sits as, um, as um, the chairperson. Um, may contribution ba ang national government? Or counted na yung contribution ng land bank that he chairs as, um, I mean, no, I don't know. Nga. Is that how you look at it? I don't know. percent own po ng DBP, ng national government, ang DBP at ang land bank. So, ikakount ko siya. So, you have 8 out of 15 coming from land bank, DBP, kung binibilang ko Secretary of Finance, it's still not 75%. Now, my question is, shouldn't it reflect the capital contribution? 
Mr. Mortel, sir. Um, good morning, Your Honors. I will uh, venture to uh, provide my insights on this. I think it, uh, the uh, issue um, is cropping up because of the uh, treatment of the kind of entity created. Uh, here it would appear, because it is an MIC, it would appear that it is a corporation. And that having so, the uh, question of Senator Scudero perhaps is on the reflection if it is treated as a stock corporation. But if the uh, entity is treated as a um, government entities with corporate body, then their submission could perhaps be accommodated. But not if the creation is entirely on the treatment of the same being a corporation. Uh, that's my submission, Your Honor. My presumption, sir, is that's why we're exempting them in the salary standardization law, the GCG law. We're exempting them from everything, payment of taxes, procurement law. The intention is for this company to operate as a private entity. That the principles of business um, would apply to this corporation and should therefore reflect to the corresponding interest and um, stakeholding of the contributors to the fund. Otherwise, it will be just, just like BSP, created by law. Kami nagpangalan ng lahat, national government nagko-contribute, okay lang. So, may I ask, um, Ma'am Lea, so is, Ms. is Attorney Mortel correct? Ang tingin nyo rito, hindi ordinaryong korporasyon, we will not treat it as a corporation. And yet, you said in the proposed bill, you will treat this as an ordinary corporation wherein the rules of corporate governance would apply. Ma'am? Um, given that the contributions are coming also from the, land, the state owned enterprises, and eventually there will also be uh, contributions from the national government, um, as we have cited from the, uh, from the proceeds of privatization, from some of the uh, proceeds of um, the, the fiscal regime of the mining sector. So eventually, tama po magiging GOCC po siya. But we are asking for the exemptions from the GCG, from the salary standardization, from the Government Procurement Act. So it would be running on a commercial uh, basis. So hybrid siya, ma'am? Ma'am, forgive me, ma'am. Ganon din po kasi yung formulation sa corporations like Temasek, uh, even like te uh, sa Indonesia. So, ganun din po yung structure niya. Um, yes, ma'am. But um, there are distinctions between Temasek and Inga um, in relation to what we are proposing here. So, just to clarify, um, so you're seeking to create a hybrid corporation that has all the benefits of a government entity Exemptions of salary standardization, exemptions of procurement law, exemptions of payment of taxes, both national and local, which will wreak havoc, by the way, because when they invest in stocks and buy and sell stocks, ang hirap itrack nun, ha? But anyway, we will go there at another time. But, um, and when you buy and sell properties too, government bonds, etc., etc. But anyway, my point is, getting all of those benefits and yet not being treated as a, as a, as a business entity that can function as if it were a private um, a private venture. Um, Mr. Chair, with the indulgence of Senator Escudero. Uh, is that, can, uh, is it with the, Na if it's okay with Senator, yes, yes okay, please Senator. proceed. Yes. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Senator Escudero. Quick interjection lang po. Ah, nabanggit na naman yung INA. In the case of INA, ang board po nila limang individual lamang tapos ang advisory board nila lima. And lastly po, in the, uh, sa questioning ni Sen Escudero, sinabi po ni Attorney Mortel ng GCG, baka ituturing ito or, or itinuturing itong maharlika na government entity with a corporate body. So just for the record, Mr. Chair, and with all due respect to the Chair, kaya nga po in plenary, although nag na dito ang ating ang, ang plenary, kaya po ni raise ni Minority Leader yung matter of the referral of the bill. Kaya po pinos niya at that point in time na baka sa Government Corporations Committee. Kasi po kung hindi malinaw din, Mr. Chair, ang executive kung, kung anong, uh, kung anong uh, animal itong maharlika, nakakalito pati sa atin dito sa Senado. So just for the record, Mr. Chair, and then again with all due respect. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Sen. Escudero.
Thank you. Please proceed, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, give me a couple of minutes, Mr. Chairman. Now, let's talk about the exemption sa GCG. May I ask why? Essentially, the GCG reviews whoever you will appoint in the board. Yes, sure. Now you created an advisory body to make the corresponding recommendations sans the GCG. May I ask why? How will the operation of MIF be hindered if the appointments to the board go through GCG? The usual course, if it is indeed a GOCC. Um, anong problema ba ng GCG na ayon yung padaanin sa kanila? What will uh, be hindered if it goes through GCG? I understand, DBP, dumadaan sa GCG, di ba? Land Bank, same. So, ano yung hindi nyo magagawa o makukuha kung dumaan sa GCG, kaya ayaw nyo? What's the logic behind it, ma'am? Um, siguro po, um, given yung experience ng mga government corporations namin in terms of uh, yung pagpapadaan sa GCG, dahil sa dami rin po ng ine-evaluate nila, yung due diligence po nila, so medyo nagkakaroon lang po ng um, time-consuming. But uh, if it would just be through the advisory body, na, na ang composition naman po ang ating Department of Budget and Management Secretary, ang NEDA uh, Secretary, so there also would be in a best position to be able to ano po, uh, have a determination of who should sit dun po sa, sa board. Ma'am, if it's only time that you're concerned about, I would presume that the GCG is um is um really busy at the beginning of any administration. It's been six months. Halos na fill up na halos lahat ng government corporations. Kung may backlog man sila, tapos na yon. Um, so it's only time. So we enact, we 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 include as part of the bill. We prioritize nila to. I mean. If it's only the delay that you're afraid, I'm telling you already, the bill will be delayed because there are so many gaps and loopholes in the bill. So the GCG will have time. You can already start processing some of the names as soon as it is approved. What else, ma'am? Because I wonder why you don't want the GCG to go through the nominees. I presume all of these will be via a letter of intent signed by the president that will go through the advisory board. The advisory board cannot just take up applications from whoever, diba? as it is with the GCG. May letter of intent, ang Secretary of Finance, ang Presidente, depende sa corporation, which the GCG will process, and if they approve it, then the appointment or the designation will be affected. So why else, ma'am? Aside from the time constraint, bakit nyo ayaw duman sa GCG? Anong ayaw nyo sa GCG kung, ayaw, kung bakit nyo ayaw padanin? Aside from the time. Um, hindi lang, um, if I may, um, Your Honor, hindi lang po kasi naman uh, in terms of the nominations to the board ang ginagawa ng GCG. Marami rin po silang ginagawa evaluating po yung performance scorecard and the like. No? So maraming preoccupation na might also uh, delay in terms of the nominations to the board for the Maharlika Fund. And uh, we see naman po with this, uh, the uh, advisory committee, na they would be in a best position to be able to know who should be the, the best minds to be able to uh, make the MIC function very well. So yun po yung uh, rationale behind what, bakit hindi na lang po dadaan sa GCG. The main reason why GCG has a permanent term is for, to guarantee independence. All of the people you're mentioning, DBM, DOF, and Ed, are all coterminous with the president and serve at his pleasure. They're all coming from one side. In fact, the main reason why GCG is there is to provide a different and separate perspective. Dahil wala naman sigurong isang tao nagmamayari ng lahat ng talino, galing at magandang intensyon para sa bansa, di ba? Maganda rin mapakinggan yung iba. And the same is true here. If you really want this MIF to succeed, the more heads that are participating um, in crafting policies and being a part of it, I think it would be better and best than simply all coming from one and the same group. 
all obeying the command and will of the president because they're all coterminous with the president and serve at his pleasure, unlike the GCG. Um, moving to the next point, ma'am. Why exemption from the procurement law, including purchase of ano bang papers yung sinasabi niyo exemption? Pati supplies niyo, exempted sa procurement law? Ah, papel, stapler, ribbon, computer? Um, I think ang sinasabi po sa procurement law are technical services. Yung pong pag -e evaluate um, like if they're going to get po yung, uh, yung fan managers. So that would be exempted from the Government Procurement Act. It did not specify here. It's, it, gave, it simply gave a blanket exemption to procurement law. Again, I'm talking about purchase of supplies, not only fund managers. I'm talking about purchase of vehicles. I'm talking about rental or purchase of a building or rental of a building or office space. I'm talking of almost everything and anything. Would you Sige. change it later on, ma'am, to specify? Uh, siguro po, uh, there would have to be uh, some clarity. Pero po sa Section 32, nakalagay po doon yung engagement of professional or technical services needed in the selection of investments as authorized in this act, such as fund management, investment, etc. po. I agree, ma'am. Pero hindi nga in-specify kung anong kasama. Exempted lang. So yun lang ba ang intention nyo? So we will specify that. I Ayun understand lang. po, uh, maybe from the G... Government Procurement Act, GPB. GPB. Yes, ma'am, GPBB. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning po, uh, Mr. Chair, as well as the honorable members of this committee. I'm Maria Ginesha Guillermo. Ma'am, the... sit there, ma'am. Thank you. Para hindi kayo naka... <laughs> Sorry. Yes, ma'am. So what's the intention here? San lang exempted ang MIF? Thank you very much, sir, for that question. Actually, it is not... Uh, the RA 9184 is still applicable as a general rule uh, for the any procurement activity of the MIC. We only have uh, provided an exemption, particularly in the engagement of... Uh, re of um, uh, technical and um, research uh, services. The reason why is because we wanted them to just give them the opportunity to really um, be able to uh, forge their agreement, um, contractual arrangement with the service provider. But however, we have made a specific requirement wherein um, it should be that the board should come up with the approved um, guidelines in the selection process for this fund or research uh, technical services, sir. Ma'am, under pa rin ang COA to, di ba? Yes po. So, ano magiging basis ng COA to say, malito, hindi tama to? Of course, sir. Um, we would look into it as far as part of the requirement pa rin po when they would specify po yung specific na criteria when they would be engaging with the research or the technical um technical services provider po. Ma'am, in this changing world, there are already consultants that subscription na lang naman yun eh. Subscribe ka sa mga, di ba, sa report ng kung sino, Bloomberg, kung sino man, di ba? Okay lang naman yun eh. Hindi naman issue yun eh, di ba? Yes, sir. Now, other, other procurement activities of the MIF, subject to um, the procurement law? Yes, sir. So when they buy a piece of property? Then it is still procurement law, sir. As long as uh, we have qualified there, sir, that it is only exempt and insofar as the engagement of technical or research um, it's, uh, ser research um, service providers. Po. I presume pag bilhin nila ng bonds, ng um, certificates of indebtedness, securities, wala lahat yun. Diba? Wala naman procurement law yun eh. There is still a procurement law, sir, because in general, we have... Paano, ma'am? Let's say, bumabay isang share of stock. Gusto nilang bumili. Bukas. Paano procurement law yun? 
there's um, as far as we are What's concerned, the process, ma'am? Uh, as far as uh, when it comes to all procurement transactions of the MIC, sir, it is still imp imperative that uh, RA 9184 would be applied. So what does RA 9184 say with respect to the purchase of shares of stock? Uh, process, of course, sir, as far as the sh um, you shares of stock, of course, this is still subject to um, the corporation code, sir. And then uh, as far as the procurement um, side of it, it is not um, under the purview po ng RA 9184. Oh, so, hindi nga kasama? Yes, sir. Hindi siya kasama? Pati pagbili ng government security, both no, foreign and sir. local? Hindi kasama? Hindi po. Pagbili ng real property, kasama? Yes, sir. Do you make a distinction between an investment in a listed company and investment in a company that's not listed? May we just look into it as, since we are referring to um, stocks, I think we have to apply uh, the corporation code pa rin po, sir. So it's not necessarily... No, ma'am. No, ma We're talking about procurement. Procurement rules, procedures, and laws. Yes, Pa. Is there a distinction between MIC, MIF, investing or buying shares of stock from a listed company compared to MIC, MIF, investing in a company that's not listed? There's no distinction, sir. Hmm? You sure, ma'am? Sir, this is insofar as the procurement law is concerned, sir. Ma'am, may kompanya ako. Tinatakot ko sila. Hoy, bili kayo ng share. Mag-invest kayo sa kumpanya ko. Ni walang nakakaalam kung ano yung laman ng kumpanya ko. Hindi, unlike a company that's listed in the stock market, well, it goes through it, yes. several several checks. Yes, sir. So, walang distinction from the point of view of 9184? We are particularly looking at... Um, sir, may I just be look check my notes, sir, is as far as investments are concerned, sir, um, this is not within the purview po kasi ng RA 9184. Ma'am, you're and, with GPPB, di ba? Yes, sir. Submit to us, ma'am, the implications yes. na lang under yes, 9184 of the possible activities that MIC, MIF will be undertaking assuming it is um, created into law. Yes, sir. Please, ma'am. Um, last point, Mr. Chairman, um, for this so that others can be given a chance. Now, ma'am, I'd like to take up tax exemptions. Exempt from local and national taxes, direct, indirect, um, national internal revenue code, local government code, all funds, assets, and properties, all revenue, income, investment earnings, as well as accruals thereto, purchase of supplies, equipment, papers, or documents. Exempted lot? Does Land Bank or DBP enjoy the same? Ma'am, from Land Bank? No, sir. What kind of exemption do you enjoy from national and local taxes? Any? None, Your Honor. DBP? None, po, Your Honor. Um, is this the first of its kind, Ma'am Lea? No, I, I don't know. I'm, perhaps PAGCOR is, or NAPOCOR used to be to a certain degree, but... Um, yes, yes, yes. Um, the intention na lang, sir. Because uh, the intention is that um, given that uh, for gun taxes to be paid, it will go back to the fund. So, um, iikot po yung pondo ng pera, mas mapapalago, mas magagamit. So, I think that was the intention behind I, I agree, ma'am. But um, the previous, you've been the National Treasurer for quite some time. You've seen the policy of um, previous Secretaries of Finance, regardless of administration. It's easier to have a uniform rule applicable to all than to create exemptions because it will wreak havoc on the system. You yourself said it will go to government anyway. Diba? Doc stamps, babayaran. Final tax sa sale ng, uh, on, on income, sale ng shares of stock. Gobyerno pa rin pupunta. Capital gains tax, documentary stamp tax, transfer tax, gobyerno naman lahat pupunta yan. So... Why wreak havoc um, by exempting this entity? And again, I think this is the first time that, to my knowledge, ah, na merong entity ganto ka lawak yung exemption na binibigay natin, when in fact, it will just simply go from one pocket to another of government. So if you want to preserve the fund, then we can put here, 
and then all taxes paid shall be reverted back to the company by way of additional investment of the national government. But let them pay the taxes in the ordinary course. Di ba ma? simple yan. Kindly consider it, ma'am. Because you will, you will have encountered several problems. Purchase of supplies, equipment, papers, documents. Biglang tax exempt, exempt sa duties, exempt lahat. Ma'am, magulo yun, ha? Magulo siya. And it will be a gaping loophole in so far as entities selling to the MIF, MIC is concerned because they will claim it's, it's sold to them even if it is not and claim the exemption. Not MIC, MIF, ha? the entity selling. Kindly consider that too, ma'am. Mr. Chair, I will yield to our other colleagues. Um, given that I'm sure they have other questions as well, um, I will await the reply and the feedback and the submissions and position papers from the economic team headed by uh, Ma'am Leia and as well as from the GPPB. Um, for me to continue with my um, interjections and interpolations on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for that very uh, uh, very good line of questioning. Uh, I was uh, hearing the uh, reply regarding R1, 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 RA9184. I think uh, with regards to the purchase of stock, just for clarification, I think uh, that would be... Uh, it would not be considered a purchase because that's actually a shift in assets. So it's as if you decided from cash to ec cash to stock. It's not actually a though it is a purchase technically. It's not a purchase. It's a shift in uh, asset composition. Just for I think uh, that would be the more relevant. Uh, uh, I, that would be the more relevant point with regards to the GPPB. It's not a purchase. It's a shift in asset composition of the GOCC. Would that be correct? Am I correct in making that uh, assumption? Just for clarification. Yes, sir. Uh, there's just a shift in the composition of the asset. And I just want to make sure because uh, stocks are not, uh, should not be uh, under R1, RA9. That's definitely not. Def I, just, yeah, I just want to make that clear. So it should not <laughs> because it's not an actual purchase, though it seems to take that nature, but it's a shift in asset composition. Yeah. Right. Mr. Yes. Chairman, I'm yes. going Next time, may I request, may the, can the committee and the chairman require that the Secretary of Finance himself attend? Yes, uh, thank and you. That's a very... To be asking um, Ma'am Leia, who is the National Treasurer, these yeah, questions. I, 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 a member of the future board of the MIF. <laughs> You're not, right? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, thank you, Senator. Uh, they were really support. In fact, they have a right? Uh, they just had a, a emergency meeting and they asked for beg their indulgence. So, but I understand they will be coming. Uh, but do we even have one representative from the Department of Finance? Yes, we do, uh, sir. Mr. Chair, ASEC, uh, sir. Sorry, uh, kindly convey to Secretary Jok. No, I thought this was important to them, and uh -huh. they wanted us to rush this. Yes. They wanted us to do this um, and facilitate its passage. The least um, we would require would be their presence. I'm not diminishing your position, ASEC, um, but um, kung anumang emergency yun, um, siguro naman mahalaga din naman to so that um, questions can be answered and not simply um, passed on. Um, and he will be the chairman of the MIF. Yes, thank you, Sen. We share your opinion and we express this to them. Uh, that's why they said there will be, uh, immediately after their meeting, they'll be rushing here. So we expect them soon. And uh, for future, uh, we will continue to emphasize that point for future uh, meetings, that we will uh, require them to show them so that we can expedite also the bill. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, we'd like to... Where's somebody in this call? Would you like to... Yeah. Uh, at this point... Uh, Who's on your list? Uh, Senator Sherwin has a few questions. Uh, Senator Wynne Gachalian has a few questions. So uh, the chair recognizes uh, Senator Gachalian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'll keep this very simple so that everyone will uh, be abreast and uh, understand the uh, issues of uh, issues surrounding and topics and concepts surrounding the Maharlika Investment Funds. I'll start off with... Um, investments. I understand Secretary 
uh, Treasurer Leah. I'll, I'll point this question to you because I think you're the uh, point person for this. Um, the fund has two objectives, correct? Development and commercial. No? And uh, the development is meant to invest in projects that is meant to spur economic development through infrastructure and others. No? Uh, can you get, cite some examples on the development or strategic objective of the fund? Just give us an example of those. Well, uh, of course, there are infrastructure projects. Um, we also are looking into um, investments in um, fintech, um, healthcare, um, also in renewable energy, so the like. Um, I'll, I'll go to specific to your specific examples, like infrastructure. What's the difference between um, the Maharlika Fund and the GAA? Um, the infrastructure component of the GAA is almost at a trillion pesos, correct? If you add school buildings, roads, if you add um, uh, 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 farm to market roads that will amount more than a trillion pesos. This is about 75 billion pesos no? in terms of uh, capitalization. So you have, a you have a trillion pesos in the GAA, you have 75 billion. What's the difference? No? We're doing it right now, anyways, with that more money. So why are we putting uh, 75 billion pesos, which is uh, a small amount compared to the GAA? To this fund and exert a lot of effort in doing so. Yes, sir. Um, actually, it's all about leveraging. Kasi, sir, di ba, um, in terms of the GAA, we are constrained because we have a very huge deficit. We cannot add more to the pressures, the fiscal pressures of the budget. But now we have this contribution since kahit lang po 75 billion siya, then we can be able to co-invest with other uh, investors in this kind of projects, would have interest in this kind of projects, even uh, getting also investments offshore. At the same time, we'd also benefit from the, trans as I've said, yung transfer of technology and knowledge because with these investments, po, now, with the co-investments, there would be other participation from uh, global investors in infrastructure projects who would have been there and have already the experience in implementing these kind of projects. So the objective is to multiply that uh, 75 billion. Hopefully, we can get other investors to uh, co-invest, meaning uh, increase the capitalization of um, or in increase the investable amount of the fund. No? What is the target? Have you already talked to potential co-investors because I if that is the case no I now I can appreciate no, um, uh, the direction of the MIF have you talked to investors and see how much can we multiply the 75 billion because in my mind 75 billion is is quite actually to be honest 75 billion for infrastructure is not so big no? uh, you're talking about the subway is about, what, half a trillion pesos already? You know? So 75 billion is not substantial in terms of infrastructure. For school building as alone, we need 400 billion pesos already. You know? So, But if you are saying that we can multiply this, you know, um, then how much are we looking at in terms of uh, multiplying this investable amount? Um, if you can just benchmark it uh, with the experience of the Indonesia Fund again, so they were able to get um, commitments from other sovereign wealth funds, from global investors, uh, to the tune of about $20 billion. Yung kung kanilang two, uh, actually $5 billion na infusion ng national go ng government of Indonesia, they were able to go uh, to get commitments amounting to about $20 uh, billion and more, more so um, in terms of other commitments and pledges to co-invest with the fund. Okay, so that's, uh, I'll keep it simple. Yeah? And, and uh, just, to, just to make everyone understand. So we can actually quadruple the amount that's a possibility. 
Yes, sir. So a 70 billion investment can go as high as, let's say, 300, 200, 300 billion in terms in of the investable. In, in commitments po. Apo. In commitments. And that's what we're looking at. Yes, sir. No? And so far, how how's the reception of... Uh, I know that the DOF went on a roadshow after the Davos event. Uh, what is the reception? I, is, did, can you give us a preview of uh, the reception to this uh, proposal? Um, during the ano po, uh, during the roadshow, well, uh, I would speak siguro po for uh, yung sa experience in London and Frankfurt because part of the presentation made by Secretary Diokno was also to already um, talk about the Maharlika Investment Fund. And uh, there's good reception, but uh, obviously, sir, they'd like to know more because we're also crafting pa lang the legislation. So they would also want to see how they, uh, as foreign investors, would be able to participate in the fund. Pero what I say, I can say is that there's already that interest that we are able to stimulate. All right. We're talking about investors, no? And uh, we're, we're trying to attract investors also to participate in the fund. And uh, how do we... How uh, do we plan to attract potential investors to the fund? What, what are the selling points that we can offer? Because I'm trying to compare this, let's say, to a PPP project. You know, uh, there's there's options for this for this uh, investors. So how do you plan to attract them to join the fund? Um, again, sir, um, I would say na first of all, thanks to Congress, we have already enacted the uh, pong economic liberalization measures with the Public Services Act the opening of the economy and then of course um the even in terms of uh, the philippine development uh, uh plan that we have uh, right now and also the listing that we have in terms of the medium term investment uh, uh framework that we have so all this already uh more or less would be um framework for the investors to see where they can come in in terms of our priority sectors how we are also trying to um uh, already uh prioritize our uh renewable energy, uh, our, uh, in terms of uh, the sustainability uh, uh, programs that we have. So these are some things, that, some of the interest that we'll be able to showcase to the investors. And um, we also know that investors on their end, they also have buckets in terms of they would want to invest, the priority sectors that they would want to invest. Like in our case, when we did our uh, sustainability bonds, marami hum pumasok in the long end of the of the, of the curve no so so to speak in the same manner there have there's a, a, a wash of liquidity and we'd like to top that liquidity to be able to come into the economy given that uh, we have now opened with a uh, with the public services act and of course with this uh, maharlika investment fund that we are now establishing will the tax exemption be a source of uh, attraction for them because I also saw the same question with Senator Scudero. I also saw that it will be exempted from all revenues, income. I would assume these are CIT uh, investment earnings. I would assume these are doc stamps and others. They'll all be exempted. So in other words, um, this is a sort of an investment for them to come in. Sorry po. Uh, it will be a magnet given that obviously, sir, mas malalaki po ang kanilang income with this kind of uh, exemptions that we are also providing. But at the same time, hindi lang naman pupunta po yung sa investors, but it would also accrue to the fund. Yeah, but uh, isn't, uh, are we giving, uh, isn't it we are giving undue advantage to private investors coming into these funds? I mean, if private investors will go to a normal mutual fund or a ETF, they pay all of these taxes. But with this fund, uh, number one, they don't pay any taxes. And then number two, aren't we skewing the returns also? Because a normal fund will pay all of these taxes, uh, uh, income tax, uh, doc stamps, and all that. So merong, kang, eh, merong MIF who is uh, uh, highly attractive because it's not paying taxes and it's attracting private funds, and you have another set of funds who paid the same, uh, who performed the same function, but pay a lot of taxes. So aren't we, in a, in a way, skewing profits? 
meaning we're not reflecting the true cost of capital because uh, we're exempting uh, taxes from these funds. Uh, In other words, we're inflating profits because we're not paying taxes. Hindi ba unfair advantage who yan? Um, yung pong exemption is really on the fund itself. Yung pong um, income, bawa, if there would be a private sector that would also um, gain more, then that would have to be declared by him as a corporate income tax. Correct, but the fund itself, diba? obviously the fund will not pay, I would assume, income tax, correct? So that income tax will now form, of, form part of its profits. Yeah, so it would be retained. It will be retained or it can be declared. Bahala na in board, diba? But it will be part of its returns, correct? As part of its computation. So my, my point there is, it's not reflecting the true cost because taxes are cost. Eh? These are business costs to the entity. But we're not reflecting that. And then mag attract tayo ng private sector. Hindi ba unfair naman that the private sector coming to the fund enjoys uh, tax-free profits versus uh, entities that are being charged with taxes? Uh, we do see your point, uh, Senator, so that's something that uh, we can... Maybe we can look at that also. Well, I'm trying to level the playing field because there are other mutual funds there. There are a lot of ETFs, there are a lot of mutual funds, there are a lot of different types of funds out there, but they're not enjoying the same... Uh, the same uh, tax um, uh, benefits as this one. So, um, in the private sector, obviously, pupunta dito, no? Because they, they have that uh, advantage. Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Mr. Chair, if I may, with the indulgence of Sen Gachalian. Please, is it, uh, with, yeah, okay, please, yes, proceed. Salamat, Sen. Mr. Chair, salamat, Sen Gachalian. Uh, quick interjection lang po. Uh, sabi nga po ni National Treasurer De Leon, uh, benchmarking with INA, gusto nyo pong i-leverage uh, yung, yung initial fund para sana, tulad ng Indonesia, may mag-co-invest, matriple yung halaga ng pondo. Pero again, Mr. Chair, may mga importanteng pagkakaiba yung ina ng Indonesia at yung proposed Maharlika Fund. Halimbawa uh, po sa, sa Indonesia, uh, meron silang significant windfalls sa petroleum at saka sa mining na in recent years, eh, nag-shoot up talaga yung commodity prices doon. At saka yung ina... Uh, hindi lang kasi yung size ng fund yung naging attractive, pero meron na po silang portfolio ng mga GOCC infrastructure and mining investment projects na even at the time of the launch of INA, meron ng healthy stream of incomes. Pero kumpara sa atin dito, Mr. Chair, uh, wala pa po tayong ganyang portfolio ng revenue earning infrastructure or uh, mining projects uh, for that matter. So just for the record, Mr. Chair, at para mas clear eye po tayo sa pagkakaiba ng konteksto ng Indonesia noon at tayo ngayon. Salamat, Mr. Chair, at salamat muli, Sen. Kachalian. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sen. Teresa. Um, I'll jump to another topic, uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission. I... I uh, I, I received this uh, position paper of DBP, and I think DBP is here, no? And uh, there's a um, suggestion here, uh, and let me just read it from your, um, I know, from your uh, position paper. The funds invested by the GFI shall carry a zero risk weight and shall not be deducted from the GFI's regulatory capital in the computation of the applicable risk-based capital adequacy ratio. ratio based on BSP manual regulations for banks. It shall, be, it shall also be exempted from any regulatory restriction if invested solely in the MIF. Well, can you explain this um, suggestion uh, from the DBP? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, um, bank GFIs are subject to regulatory ratios. And when we invest, um, it decreases the amount of um, capital, no? and uh, when the when the capital is reduced, then it's possible that we will breach those ratios. 
And so if it is exempt, then it will not affect our ability to carry out our, ma our mandate and lend. Basically, what you're saying is if you invest in MIF, it should be risk-free. Yes, Your Honor. But is that fair? Because the MIF is not risk-free. Um, Your Honor, if, 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 the, if the ability of the bank to carry out its mandate and lend will be constrained by investing in the MIC, then we will not be able to... Yeah, but, but this is basically what you're suggesting. If I, put, if I invest in the MIF or put money in the MIF, it should be treated as risk-free. Yes, Your Honor. So that it will not impair my capital. Yes, Your Honor. But, it's, but the MIF is not risk-free. Uh, and that's, that's why we are requesting for the regulatory relief. Sir. So in other words, um, you're finding cover for your investments. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, but um, it, that's not, uh, it's not um, first of all, that's not fair, you know, because all investments have risk. And um, we cannot just give isolate you from risk because this is an investment vehicle. So there's upside and downside. That's number one. And then number two, assuming we grant, assuming this is carried, then it will affect the stability of the bank because you're again not reflecting the true risk of the of the investment. You're not reflecting the true. Um, quality of the investment. Your, Your Honor, the bank has investments which are already considered risk-free as far as we're concerned. Um, yeah, but for MIF? It's guarantee spot. Um, for example, Your Honor, um, the MRT, the MRT investment does not impair on our, on our capital Capital, Your Honor. And there are I, I know, but for this particular investment. But my point there, my point is, uh, if we will carry this type of suggestion throughout the bill, I just want to point this out, no? because uh, in subject, of course, the committee's this, uh, uh, study, uh, we're actually not reflecting the true nature of your investment, which I think it's a bad practice. Your, Your Honor. You cannot treat this investment as risk-free. From what the discussion I heard earlier, there's certain amount of risk involved. Your Honor, the, with all due respect, the risk is being taken by the MIC, but as far as the bank is concerned, the bank would like to be protected from that risk. Yeah, I, I know your point. I get your point. No, I get your point. But uh, um, Again, no, uh, it, this is a policy issue that the DOF, DOF took, and uh, uh, I would assume that they have consulted the two banks, the two major uh, investors in this uh, endeavor, and you put your money with your eyes wide open that there is risk involved. No? Your, your Honor, um, my, my point there is we're also protecting the, the uh, depositors of the bank. Because at the end of the day, I'm keeping this simple, huh? because at the end of the day, those risks will be transferred to the investors. Your, Your Honor, the provision that we respectfully propose is only for the computation of our adequacy ratios. That this amount that we invest in the, in the corporation not be included when, when the BSP computes our... Uh, our ratio, our capital adequacy ratios. Will the investment of the land bank and the uh, DBP be guaranteed by the MIF or national government? Will, will, is there such an arrangement? Your, your Honor, Section 11 of the Section 11 of the bill. For example, everything in, that, you know, in this type of uh, activity, not everything is rosy. You know? uh, in some cases uh, uh, will have uh, downturns and uh, um, are the banks protected? Or is there a certain level of guarantee for the investors? Your Honor, um, Section 11 of the proposed bill uh, mentions that 
security or debt instruments issued by the MIC to the GIFs shall be guaranteed by the national government. Okay. So who bears the risk? <laughs> who bears the risk? The In other words, government. that's my point. The, the taxpayers. Government. Correct? Ultimately. Ultimately, is the taxpayer. Us bears the risk. All of us will bear the risk. So that's my the point. No, um, we have to be reflective of what we want to do, um, uh, and this type of uh, funds. Uh, and I saw the portfolio. No, even though the portfolio are, um, I know this will be managed uh, ultimately by um, experts, uh, but it's not completely uh, risk free. For example, investing in infrastructure, it's long term. The longer the infrastructure, the higher the risk. We have cases of MRT at one point, they could not pay, you know, and uh, it was very messy. So uh, my point of the matter is, uh, I, I saw this percentage allocation of investable funds. These are not, uh, even though we can mitigate the risk by hedging from one asset class to another, but it's not completely risk-free. You know? um, uh, so my, my point there is we're transferring the risk to the taxpayers. Ultimately, all of us. And uh, if deficiency will happen, we have to cough up, pump in additional capital to this, uh, to this fund. You know? So that's another point that we have to look at. Uh, who bears the risk at the end of the day? Uh, Treasurer, you want to? Uh, if I may, uh, Senator, um, I just want also to mention that uh, part of the, the legislation, a risk management unit will also be established. And the board will also come up with an investment strategy. And uh, obviously, uh, part of the, um, the investment strategy is to ensure that uh, there's a good performance of the investments of the fund. There are also penal sanctions against um, you know, fraud and underperformance of those who are running the fund. So there are um, a lot of safeguards to ensure that the fund uh, would be viable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Uh, Treasurer Leia. Mr. Chairman, I would yield to our other colleagues. I have a few more, but I'll, I'll yield so, I, so that uh, others can participate. Okay. Uh, yes, at this point, we'd like to uh, uh, recognize uh, Se uh, Senator Ontiveros. Thank you. Salamat, Mr. Chair, at uh, magandang umaga po muli sa lahat. Um, Okay. okay, Mr. Chair, for my first question, Salamat. I'd like to share what a former president of a bank uh, shared with me recently. Sabi niya, the Philippines has a high level of debt to finance government programs and no new sources of funds have come into consideration since the MIF discussion started. And because instead of paying debt, we are putting up an SWF. In effect, the Philippines is borrowing the money for the Sovereign Wealth Fund. We should, sabi niya, we should perhaps call it the Sovereign Liability Fund, as it is effectively funded by liabilities. Uh, there is also no assurance that the cost of borrowing will be lower than the yield to be generated by the SWF. So, Mali po ba itong two-part statement, uh, Mr. Chair, na there, were, there are no new sources of funds that have come into consideration at now we will therefore be funding the Maharlika Investment Fund with even more debt and thus deviating from the administration's plan of bringing down the debt-to-GDP ratio from 63% to just a little over 50% by 2028. Uh, Si, si National Treasurer De Leon po ba ang pwedeng sumagot, Mr. Chair? We'll try to answer. Po. Salamat, ma'am. Kanina po nabanggit nga po ni Senator Mark Villar about the difference between debt and equity. So, isa nga po sa, um, well, we're looking into this fund uh, to be able to attract more equity because then investors will have nga po yung long-term uh, placements do sa fund and at the same time, share in the risk of the fund. So, yun po ang nakikita natin. Uh, and again, 
I would cite po yung example na nangyari po sa other sovereign wealth funds na they were able to generate uh, co-investments into the um, undertakings, particular infrastructure projects nung pong uh, kanilang uh, mga sovereign fa- wealth funds na ito. So we see na given that uh, there would now be more um, funding in the form of equity na papasok, then uh, it can be able to complement some of our infrastructure um, uh, investments and uh, ultimately, siguro po, mababawasan na po yung fiscal pressure on the part of the budget because some of these activities can later on be taken up by the by the fund itself together with the investments from offshore and even from the domestic um, investors um, like our um, mga infrastructure funds locally as well. Pero at this point in time po, ma'am, wala pa po, po yung new sources na yon. Ia-attract pa lang po natin um, through co-investments. Wala, wala pa po tayong legislation. And for, uh, so I think when we were discussing this, they were also very eager, but they want to see the concept. Ano po ba ang how to be able to invest in the fund? Because the, the scheme, the structure is not yet there. But of course, they're aware about the draft legislation. But uh, there's enthusiasm on their part na to be able to see how um, this would evolve and how how later on the opening where they can also participate. Yung pag tinayo po yung Maharlika Fund under the current terms as reflected in the bill, ano po yung magiging epekto nun dun sa uh, ambisyon ng gobyerno na iba pa yung debt to GDP ratio natin? Ano po yung projection nyo doon? Um, I think right now, wala pa po yung, uh, yung pang firm projection, but... Uh, as we see na mas mababa po, mas mapapababa po natin yung ating mga debt metrics uh, if we have already the fund. Because um, yun nga po, mababawasan po yung uh, need for us to be able to borrow because some of this can already be uh, uh, in the infrastructure projects, our mga development projects that we have can already be funded by these co-investments uh, by the fund and other uh, co- uh, mga global investors who would be uh, participating in the MIF. Sabi nyo nga po, mababawasan yung uh, need natin uh, to take out more debts, take on more loans. Pero sa ngayon, yun yung sitwasyon natin. Sa bispiras ng pagpapanganak ng Maharlika Fund, we are in a situation na we will need to take out more debts. Tama po ba yun? Uh, yes, because we are still, oh, ma'am, alam po yung sa medium, but we have the medium term uh, fiscal framework already. Now we saw na, we will see that the trajectory ng ating debt would already be coming down. Had it not been for the pandemic, naka 39.6% na po tayo ng debt to GDP nung, ano po, nung 2019. And at the same time, kasi um, the, what's a more viable measure ngayon is really on the gov- general government debt uh, to GDP, hindi lang po yung national government because other parts of the uh, of the government are also operating on a surplus. So yung mga corporation, mga local uh, government. So if you look at that, mas mababa po yung pung uh, general government debt to GDP than the national than the NG debt to GDP. And speaking po of the MTFF, nung, nung kahit nung tinalakay namin yung medium term fiscal framework dito. Walang, wala pa doon yung Maharlika Fund, di po ba? Hindi, hindi naman po siya nabanggit doon. Hindi rin po nabanggit sa inaugural address, kahit sa unang zona ni Presidente. Wala pa po siya sa Ambition 2040. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair, si Asek Bernabe daw po. Mr. Chair, if I may ask to be recognized. Please proceed, Asek. Um, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am po. Uh, hindi po po siya kasama doon sa medium-term fiscal program. But... Um, ang contemplation po namin just to uh, add po sa sinabi ni Treasurer on, on um, potentially lowering the debt metrics. We contemplate po in the crafting of the bill as this one as non-tax revenues. Meaning, um, if ever po it becomes successful, um, it would provide additional coffers, uh, additional funds to the to the uh, to the national government and for example po in in one of the TWGs in uh, congress and and I'd like to address po yung uh, additional concerns or, or question po ni senator Gatchalian um in case po in case lang po this is all counterfactual and in case and the MIF is has the ability to invest in toll roads for example po uh NLEX was when they built on all roads way back in 2005. It was about 54 billion. Of course, inflation going back. Assuming po, um, 
the the uh, MIF with the 75 billion invested its whole uh, part of its money to be the one commercially uh, uh, commercially involved in the in the uh, toll road and management and collection of fees. By 2021, po, that, that NLEX revenues is around 5.9 billion. And assuming we are only the owner, um, and the, the NLEX uh, paid taxes of around 900 million plus, it assumes, for example, 1 billion na lang po, rounded off. So together, if in the current um, structure of the bill, since exempted siya, the revenue uh, the government loses one billion dollars, uh, one billion pesos of taxes, but participates in the upside of five point nine billion. We assume na, ma'am, na we projected in the uh, we participate in the co-ownership or joint venture in that establishment. So that would translate around sixteen million pesos a day, a day po. That just just dividing the five point nine billion. Uh, annual revenues 2021 divided by 365. That's around 16 million uh, income of the MIF, which the MIF can uh, translate to dividends to the national government. And, and yun po ang intention was to at least participate commercially in the uh, potential upside of any commercial business, but at least developmental po. I mean, all roads, uh, railway systems, and roads, highways, and the like po. Salamat, Asik Bernabe. So, backtrack lang ako ng konti. Before we get to that point, and dahil mukhang top of mind din po sa inyo yung INA bilang isa sa mga best practices model sa ating uh, neighborhood, syempre, bago sila nakarating din sa ganong klaseng uh, situation, let's just go back to the beginning. Meron nga po, gaya ng nabanggit ko kanina, meron na po silang handang uh, portfolio ng mga already earning na mga proyekto, particularly sa petroleum, sa minerals, pang-attract talaga dun sa mga co-investors. Actually, Mr. Chair, itatanong ko sana ito sa huling tanong ko, but since napag-uusapan na rin, meron na po ba tayong ganyang portfolio of investment-ready, uh, already earning projects? At kung wala pa, paano i-generate ito? Paano i-develop ng Maharlika Fund? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, um, Senator, in the contemplation po in the crafting the bill, um, in the discussion po, we recognize that the national government is in deficit, but some of the GOCCs have so-called surplus, uh, meaning investable funds like the, the Land Bank and DBP po. Um, you're correct po na we have uh, not have natural resources that in surplus, but um, in the in the uh, uh, plan of the Secretary of Finance, we plan to um, at least fully develop your IT mining industries, extractive industries, which right now um, at least contribute less than uh, one percent of uh, of GDP, and if at least uh, could be at least um, robustly developed in such a way that it contributes to the coffers of the the national government, that could be a, a source of potential upside na windfall that could contribute potentially to the fund. Pero at this point in time nga po, wala pa po tayong ganyang portfolio tulad ng Indonesia nung simula nung kanilang ina, pang-attract ng co-investors. So ang pang-attract pa lang natin sa ngayon sa konsepto ng Maharlika ay yung comparatively mas-mas maliit na initial funds. Opo. And since napag-usapan na rin yung NLEX kanina, bakit kailangan pang dumaan sa isang Maharlika Fund? Ang DBP ba? Ang Land Bank ba? Hindi ba pwedeng yung mga banko diretsyong mag-invest sa isang NLEX? I mean, is that in the realm of the possible, DBP? Your, Your Honor, um, DBP is constrained in terms of the investments that it can make mm. because of certain re regulation. But um, with the existence of the fund, there's, a, there's an opportunity for DBP to to be involved in the investment of um, some um, some instruments or even some uh, in equity of of uh, projects that it might not be able to because of its mandate or because of its limitations. Mm, Mr. Chair. 
Mr. Chair, I think our awaited finance secretary has arrived. Yes, I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, well, first, I'd like to acknowledge on, on the online presence of uh, who? Oh, Sen uh, Senator uh, Majority Floor Leader uh, Joel Villanueva. I'd like to uh, acknowledge his presence online, and of course, I'd like to recognize the presence of our uh, Department of Finance Secretary Secretary Ben Jokno. Uh, thank you very much. May I proceed, Mr. Yes, Chair? Uh, you can proceed, yes, Senator. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. At magandang umaga po muli, uh, Sec. Jok, no? Ah, good morning. Good morning po, Your Honor. And, ma'am, sa ang land bank ba, uh, posible ba mm -hmm. na makapag-invest directly sa isang proyekto tulad ng NLEX na hindi na kailangan dumaan sa isang Maharlika Fund? Of course. Through the Chair. Yeah, yeah, yes, please, proceed, ma'am. Yes, um, Senator Ontiveros, sir. Uh, Short answer, uh, Your Honor, is yes, we can. But for subject to uh, regulatory uh, provisions or um, review of uh, our regulator, basically the BSP. Salamat po, ma'am. And in the case for of DBP, eh, di posible din na uh, through proper means tanggalin yung legal constraint. Ano, ano exactly po yung legal constraint na iyon sa ngayon, sir? Um. Our mandate kasi po is uh, with respect to particular sectors that we should be focused on. But yes, Your Honor, um, we can invest also in those things. Salamat po. Without necessarily going through uh, such a creature as a Maharlika fan. Anyway, that, that was my first question, Mr. Chair. Um, moving on to, to my next. Um, after his meeting in Davos, sinabi ni Presidente na the investment fund will not be like a bank that will accumulate fund, and after which uh, the board of directors will decide on how the fund will be used. Instead, sabi ni Presidente, capital will be mobilized by the fund every time there is a viable investment that will require its support. Uh, Nasurpresa talaga akong marinig yung ganitong idea kay Presidente, Mr. Chair. Kasi sa akin, simpleng ibig sabihin, we could altogether avoid creating a new entity na nag authorize ng financial support sa mga strategic projects. Uh, instead, the entity that will decide to provide the financial support for a project being considered, DBP man yan, Land Bank man yan, ibang entity pa ng gobyerno natin, ay pwedeng simpleng gamitin yung sariling existing rules niya of authorizing investments and expenditure. Kung yung entity naman na ito ay yung, sabi natin, NEDA board, uh, pwede naman siya mag-authorize ng funding support, halimbawa para sa cold storage facilities, para sa sibuyas, uh, uh, para yung private sector din, maingganyo no? to part with its own capital at mag-invest din sila sa cold storage facilities, halimbawa sa Nueva Ecija at saka sa Mindoro. Uh, ang kami naman po sa Kongreso, pwede namang mag-proceed sa yung karaniwang proseso namin ng pag-authorize ng release of funds, kahit pa sa mga projects na multi-year cash release ang commitment. So pwede po ba, Mr. Chair, malaman yung uh, pag-iisip ni Finance Secretary dito? Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. The purpose of the fund is to widen the options available to the government. So you're right, we can borrow money from the World Bank, we can borrow money from ADB that will be appropriated in the General Appropriations Act. But when you are, the banks can also invest, but subject to some restrictions on, uh, say, single borrower's limit, on, on the uh, allowable uh, investment for a particular sector, say housing, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, GSIS can do the same thing, SSS can do the same thing. But, but when you have a fund like this, and we're, we're thinking of funding huge or large infrastructure projects, okay, for example, if you want to build a subway, instead of borrowing money, for example, from, from, from Japan, which we will pay money, we can use this fund to, to invest in this particular uh, undertaking. So, so you just widen the, the options available to the government, Your Honor. Salamat, uh, Sec, Mr. Chair. But again, uh, pwede naman na lang natin i-widen yung options ng existing financial institutions natin. Ang problem, Your Honor, is that, that sometimes, for example, yung, uh, for example, yung international airport ng Bicol, no? 
inabot po ng 10 years yung kasi pitsi-pitsi lang po ang ano, allocation. When you allocate money, say 200 million this year, 200 million that, masyado pong matagal bago matapos yung project. So nawawalan po ng uh, yung, yung present value ng, ng, ng project na dapat na na, na, na na derive mo na kagad within say if you can construct that within three years instead of ten years malaki pong difference ng benefit po nun. Uh, salamat, uh, Sec, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Kapag po ba maharli ka fund, mas mabilis pong uh, mapapatupad yung ganyang mga big ticket projects. Eh, nabanggit nga rin po ulit yung subway kanina. Dun sa pagtatanong ni Sen Gatchalian, sinabi nga na malaki yung at least initial uh, fund na iniis... Uh, maliit uh, ang maharli ka fund amount kumpara sa mga ongoing big ticket projects natin tulad nga po ng subway ngayon. Mas mabilis po ba talaga kung Maharlika Fund ang gagawa nito? So, tingin ko po kung dedicated po yung Maharlika Fund for huge projects na ganun, ay mas madali pong magagawa. Kasi, for example, nag-allocate po halimbawa kami ng 1, 1 billion for this project. Pagdating po sa Congress, kinakat po ng Congress, no? na, na, na didisrupt po yung mga right of way na dapat nabili na ng ano, kinakat ng, ng Congress, eh hindi nyo magagawa kagad yung so yun po, it interface. Kahit multi-year project po, ito nagtatagal po dahil, dahil nga sa, there's a subject to, hindi nyo nakoconcentrate doon sa, sa objective to have it constructed as soon as possible so you derive the benefit as soon as possible. Can I just uh, take yes, Mr. Chair. And, uh, recognize uh, our Senate President Pro Tempor, uh, Senator Lauren de Garda. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Salamat, Mr. Chair. And I guess, Sec Jokno, uh, kami na nagtatrabaho sa Kongreso, lalo na kaming hindi kumbinsido sa Maharlika Fund, we can hear this as a challenge, yung mas timely action sa pamamagitan ng GAA at iba pang legislative support uh, sa parte po namin na gustong mas tignan yung alternative uh, means of funding important government projects bukod dito sa Maharlika Fund. So, salamat po. Uh, moving on po to my next question. Yung isang argumento po na ginagamit ng mga proponents ng measure na ito ay, yun na nga, na mag induce ito ng co-financing ng infrastructure projects. So, uh, with a view to clarifying uh, further the role that the MIF financing is intended to play sa pag-induce pareho ng foreign at saka domestic funding para mag-co-finance nitong infrastructure projects, uh, may I ask a resource person from... Uh, Chair, pala nandito po ba ang NEDA PPP Center? Ah, dito si SP. Uh, if I can just uh, yes, acknowledge Chair. the presence of our Senate President, uh, Miguel Subiri. Thank you. Uh, please proceed. Salamat, Mr. Chair. May buntag sa SP. Chair, nandito po ba ang PPP Center ng NEDA o kaya ang DOE or iba pang infrastructure agencies? Mr. Chair? Uh, may DOE ba or NEDA PPP Center or other infra agencies na nandi rito? Uh, NEDA has a representative here, I believe. Yes. Yeah, PPP Center is not here. Yeah. Uh, then, Chair... Take it, down notes. <laughs> Napaka-overqualified mag-take down notes, uh, Yusek Edilion. Sige po, just for the record, itatanong ko po sana sa PPP Center ninyo, uh, i-describe yung present modes by which yung project ideas halimbawa para sa renewable energy na binanggit din ni National Treasurer kanina. Paano itong mga idea sa RE uh, ay brought through the project identification and approval pipeline at kung papaano ito ginagawang less risky uh, via government promises to bear project risks or via government co-finance. And lastly, kung papaano napapackage itong mga proyekto, halimbawa nga RE projects, uh, sa mga special purpose vehicles o SPVs para nga mag-attract pareho ng foreign at domestic equity at saka bank financing. Uh, and lastly, ma'am, para pa rin sa PPP Center ninyo, uh, hilingin ko sana, siguro kahit i-submit na lang po nila in writing through the chair, i-describe po nila yung institutional innovations, if any. Halimbawa, via describing the limitation of those modes, yung unang binanggit ko po, uh, citing specific projects na presently nasa pipeline pero dumadanas ng delays. At saka, paano itong mga present project uh, identification, paano... Uh, 
paano nito pinepresent yung project identification, co-financing, at saka legal packaging modes? Paano ito ma-alter uh, sa pag-introduce ng Maharlika funding modality? So anong present constraints uh, ang ma-address ng Maharlika investment support na hindi kayang i-address ng present mechanisms? Uh, and lastly po, kung... BBP po provide ng cash flow support para sa irrigation or potable water concession projects. Uh, Nisip ko po kasi, uh, as it already does now, simpleng pwede na lang gamiti ng DBP yung GAA fund releases sa ka future cash flow uh, mula sa operation ng water facilities bilang collateral. So salamat Yusek Edilion and Sir uh, VP Mantaring. Any any thoughts about that? Uh, DBP at saka yung in, in relation sa irrigation and potable water projects. We we do have programs po on on water. Um, uh, so meron bang value added ang isang Maharlika fund uh, sa kasalukuyang nagagawa nyo na providing support for irrigation and uh, water projects? The, the demand, I believe, is still a lot and we can still, there's still a lot um, of development that can happen as far as that's concerned. And can that development take place institutionally within DBP or essential ba ang isang Maharlika fund para ma-expand yung capacity nyo? It can go both ways po, but with the Maharlika fund, um, there will be more that can go around because we're also constrained by our lending capacity because of mm -hmm. our capitalization. Salamat po, um, BP Mantaring and uh, Yusek Edilion. Uh, going to my next question, if, uh, do I still have time, Mr. Chair, at, in this round? Please proceed. Salamat, uh, Chair. Um, so let me now, Mr. Chair, go straight to Article 11. Uh, kasi ito yung isang... Uh, article natin that really jumps out to me the most. Yung penal provision po, napaka, ridiculously napakababa considering na yung Maharlika Investment Fund mag-handle ng billions of pesos. Uh, ni walang forfeiture ng ill-gotten wealth in favor of government. Uh, walang perpetual disqualification from public office for offenses committed by government officials na bahagi ng MIC board. Likewise, walang provision sa event na yung funds invested ay gamitin sa money laundering. Halimbawa po, sa graft and corrupt practices, ang isang korporasyon na mag appoint ng intermediary na mag -e engage pala sa graft and corrupt practices, mafafine lang siya sa 100,000 to 1 million pesos. Uh, isang director or officer na magto-tolerate ng ganyang graft and corrupt practices, mapipinalize ng 500,000 hanggang 1 million pesos. Kabaliktad niyan, sa Plunder Act, enacted in 1991, amended in 93, uh, ito po tungkol sa pag-amas ng ill-gotten wealth sa aggregate amount ng 50 million pesos, punishable ng reclusion perpetua, 20 to 40 years. Forfeiture of ill-gotten wealth in favor of government and perpetual disqualification from uh, public office. Bakit po napakababa ng proposed penalties dito sa napakalaking ipinapangarap na Maharlika Fund, Mr. Chair? Sino po ang pwedeng... Yes, Mr. Question. Chair. That's why we have to go through this uh, process. If you want to propose amendments to the House version... Uh, it's 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 going to be uh, up to you and legislators to impose a higher penalty if you feel that a higher penalty is called for. Salamat, uh, Sec. Jokno, Mr. Chair. Of course, we're looking at that considering the, the Senate uh, bill, our Senate uh, bill. Uh, Yes, Mr. Thank, Chair. Thank you, Sandra. I think uh, thank you for that very enlightening line of question. I think that's a good I point. You know, we're we're trying to balance the um, the penalties from the private sector and the public sector. Of course, at the same time, realizing that uh, you know this is sort of a hybrid. Um, this is a hybrid format that we're working on. Um, I, if I, I I'd have um, along the lines of questioning of are you are you, are you I just have a couple more questions after you, Mr. Chair. Oh, okay. I just want a quick. I, I, I was just curious uh, about pursuing this line about regarding the limitations of the banks. I know that Senator Antiveros mentioned that all earlier. I, 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 I would like to request if you could maybe um, 
specifically give us some of the limitations that you have so that the, so that the public can also be informed about what the advantages of the Maharlika. Because, of course, banks, like what Secretary, there's a single borrower's limit. And of course, you know, when it comes to your assets, yes, you can purchase, as yes, you can purchase asset. But of course, in, in the way that you manage it is also limited. And in the orientation, when banks buy it, it's with the orientation that you want to dispose of the asset, not manage it for the future and then eventually IPO. It's not in the, that's not in the, so I hope uh, maybe uh, either the uh, land bank or DBP can enlighten us on the, what the limitations are uh, regarding your uh, ownership acquisition of uh, assets using your, uh, using your funds. Uh, and then afterwards you can proceed. I just want to be enlightened with that point. Year for, for land bank. Uh, as a universal bank, we can actually invest in uh, allied and non allied uh, undertakings. So, uh, allied, uh, non allied undertakings, of course, are uh, undertakings that are not related to financial services. Uh, the example uh, given a while ago by Senator Ontiveros are highways, I think, and other infra projects. Uh, we can do those. Uh, we, we can invest in those um, non-allied services, but uh, the the risk weight uh, or even the, our entire investment in both those investments, even allied investments, will be deducted from our capital. And I think that is where my colleague from the DBP was coming from. Uh, and that is why in the bill, uh, there is a request for the investment of the banks in the MIC or MIF be exempted from the regulatory, uh, the regulation that, that will have to be deducted from our capital. But if I may add, Mr. Chair, all the investments of the bank, be it in equity or in term in in via loans are subject to the usual due diligence, and each bank. Um, I can speak for land bank and also for DBP because I was once in DBP. We have actually a set of risk asset acceptance criteria, the first filter. So, uh, not but not to also ignore the national socioeconomic agenda because as policy banks, we are expected to support the national economic agenda. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Yes, uh, I understand like uh, most funds, they have a threshold where they can, they must, uh, a large portion of their fund, and I don't know if you have the same uh, criteria, so a large portion of the fund has to be invested in uh, virtually risk-free, which is basically t government T-bills, risk-free instruments. Uh, in your case, uh, how much of your, what is the composition of your uh, your asset? What, what, what are the requirements? Because I know there are other, they have very strict requirements. I think a large, a majority, a large percentage has to be in, I know, government securities so that it's uh, virtually risk-free. So I, I wonder what is the uh, threshold for uh, land bank and uh, actually the threshold it's not a very um it, it it's a very dynamic process mr chairman uh what we do have uh, by way of again regulation is a single borrower's limit when we lend so uh, which is based on our capital so for land bank that is actually huge uh almost uh more than 60 billion per single borrower in terms of investment uh we have an asset and liability committee that will make sure that our investments, given the risk weights of the different asset classes, will have to be within our uh, desired capital adequacy ratio. Uh, right now, 97% of our 1.3 trillion in investments, net of the loans, are in government securities. Yes, sir. Thank you. Salamat, Chair. Actually, isang tanong na lang po at saka isang motion. Um, so, to pursue some of the points raised earlier by uh, Sen. Escudero, so Section 19 provides for the composition of the 15-member board. Uh, tapos yung independent directors shall be chosen by the advisory body. So, siyempre, the board should always ensure na meron siyang appropriate... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I see uh, Sec... Uh, 
Pangandaman uh, sorry, yes, yes. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge, uh, I committed to acknowledge our DBM Secretary, uh, Secretary Amena Pangandaman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I was saying that uh, the board, no, uh, kailangan siguro niya na may appropriate mix of competence and expertise. Siya. So uh, who who could please clarify? Sino po itong six regular members representing contributors to the fund? Ah, uh, kasi per um, kasi ngayon na nga po per section eleven, the fund's initial capitalization shall be sourced from land bank and DBP with subsequent annual contributions from Banco Central, Pagcor, and other gaming corporations. So, uh, given this, sino pa po yung magbubuo ng anim na regular members uh, ng board ng MIC? Sino pa yung remaining four? The independent directors, Your Honor, will be select, will be uh, chosen by the board of advisors. No? And uh, I think eventually that's that's they should be appointed by the president. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair, Secretary. Pero iba pa po yung five independent directors. Yung uh, pumunang uh, six regular members. Kasi sa ngayon nakapangalan pa lang Land Bank, DBP. Sino pa po yung apat? Uh, depende po yun sa contribution ng organization ng or ng financial institution dun sa sa capital ng uh, Ng, uh, ng fund, yes. Salamat, uh, Secretary. And, uh, uh, opo. Mr. Chair? Yes, indeed. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair, Attorney Mortel. Mr. Chair, if I may be recognized. Please, uh, please proceed. Um, along that uh, question, uh, Your Honors, uh, Section 30 of the proposed bill uh, provided that the regular directors will not be exempted to the coverage of the uh, GCG. And therefore, by virtue of that, they will be subjected also to the fit and proper rule under Section 15 of RA 10149. And therefore, it addresses the question that they will pass the scrutiny of GCG as far as their integrity, competence, and other requisites of the GCG for them to qualify to become a regular director. Salamat po, uh, Commissioner Mortel. Um, of course, standing pa rin yung mga concerns na initially ni Reyes ni Sen Escudero. Sino-sino ba ang mga ito? At talagang magiging proportional ba yung representation nila sa board sa uh, magnitude ng contribution nila uh, dun, sa, dun sa Maharlika Fund? And further, ano po ba yung significance ng pagkakaroon ng 15-member board? Kailangan ba talaga ng board ng 15 members para sapat at efficiently uh, magawa yung functions niya? Again, turning to the INA na uh, isang best practices model apparently sa ating region, sila nga limang individuals lang ang board nila as of 2021. Uh, at saka notably, uh, walang miyembro ng board ng INA ay galing sa public sector. Ni concurrently nagsaserve sa executive position sa isang GFI nila or isang GOCC. Samantala yung five-member advisory board nila ng INA, may dalawang government reps, tapos tatlong uh, independent members from the private sector. So kailangan po ba talaga triple ang bilang ng board? Your na Honor, uh, the original executive department's proposal is was seven. So yung house po ang nag, nag, nag 15. So again, that is subject to your your discussion. Kayo po magdi-decision kung 7, 15, 13, kayo po magdi-decision yan. Well noted, Sec. Salamat po uh, para doon. Importante din sa amin malaman yung history ng evolution ng bill, a uh, concept nung, nung fund na ito. Uh, so, doon po sa... Uh, it was a very helpful material provided as chair that night of the briefing ng executive. Yung isang material na binigay nila sa atin, yung 2023 study ng Milken Institute, Best Practices of Sovereign Wealth Funds, the case for the Philippines. Doon po hinighlight na research shows that political influence in board activities and management can worsen financial performance. So considering this po, paano yung independence ng board masisiguro 
uh, para maiwasan ng korupsyon, maiwasan ng politically driven investments kung yung chair, uh, nothing personal, this is institutional, uh, yung chair ay yung ating Secretary of Finance, uh, isang cabinet secretary na kumikilos bilang alter ego ng presidente. At yung, yung Banko Sentral ay regular member din. Notable kasi, at, at least dito sa Pilipinas, ang ating Banko Central Governor ay chair ng uh, Anti-Money Laundering Council. At yung uh, AMLAC Secretariat composed ng full-time permanent employees uh, ng Banko Central. So, paano po nakocontemplate ngayon pa lang yung pagsiguro ng independence uh, ng board uh, given these circumstances, Mr. Chair? I think ang independence po dyan ang board is that they will serve fixed tenure. Hindi po pwedeng tanggalin basta-basta. No? And they will not be subject to uh, confirmation by the Commission on Appointment. Number three, yung budget po nila hindi po dadaan sa Kongreso. Okay. Salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair, Sek uh, Jokno. Huling tanong na lang bago yung aking brief motion, Mr. Chair. So considering na intention po natin dito sa Pilipinas makuha yung best practices ng sovereign wealth funds sa ibang mga jurisdictions, lalo na siguro una-una na sa loob nitong ating ASEAN region, pwede po bang mag-request ng kopya ng charters ng uh, INA ng Indonesia yung Temasek Holdings at pati yung GIC Private Limited ng Singapore uh, at pati yung Kazana National Berhad Board ng Malaysia. And lastly po, Mr. Chair, baka hingi rin po sana ng kopya ng charter ng insolvent na ngayon ng Malaysia na IMD, 1MDB uh, para lang ma maiwasan na if ever yung Maharlika ay gamitin bihang behikulo para gawin ang plunder at saka money laundering. We'll, we'll provide those uh, documents, Your Honor. Marami salamat, Mr. Chair, Sec Jokno. So lastly, Mr. Chair, uh, maikling uh, motion na lamang po. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think this hearing benefits from hearing all voices around the table. Kaya respectfully, nagmo-motion po ako uh, sa komite, sa pamamagitan ng chair, na mag-imbita ng mga representante sa Foundation for Economic Freedom, Management Association of the Philippines at sa UP Alumni Association na maging resource persons din po sa ating komite. Uh, in a joint private letter sa opisina ko, pinirmahan po ni na Mr. Calixto Chiquiamco, Attorney Benedict uh, D. Baladad at uh, Ms. Mia Angela Alentahan, sinuma po nila yung kanilang posisyon at nag-express po sila ng interes na ipaliwanag ito dito sa ating Senate hearings. And just lastly, to summarize their position, sabi po nila sa sulat, the MIF is highly questionable as a strategy to achieve the government's stated objectives. This is due to the fundamental flaw that funding of the MIF will not come from significant surpluses from commodity earnings or government operating results. Instead, the funding will be extracted from and weaken the BSP, GFIs, and other GOCCs. Weakening the BSP will reduce its ability to fulfill its primary purposes, and relying on the BSP's dividends will engender systemic risks giving the GFIs a statutory guarantee for their lendings to the MIF will open the sizable liquidity of the LBP and the DBP, but it creates no incentive for diligence since the risk is passed as a contingent liability entirely to the NG. At sa ganitong dahilan, Mr. Chair, respectfully move uh, that the chair, the committee invite uh, those three additional resource persons. Um, I so move, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. And I hereby direct the Secretariat to please uh, list, uh, well, invite those uh, resource persons mentioned by Senator Ontiveros. And rest assured, we will be inviting uh, uh, the stakeholders present so that we can really uh, we can really hear all the possible uh, opinions so that what comes out of the committee will be a very refined uh, report. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair, at sa ating government economic managers. Thank you very much. And, uh, and I, 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 St. Lawrence, would you like to ask him? Uh, at this point, I'd like to recognize online uh, Majority Floor Leader Joel Villanueva.
Uh, session suspended. Recognize Senator, uh, Senate, uh, Senate President Pro Tem uh, Lauren de Garda. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Because of the voluminous materials and uh, the briefing the other day, uh, I'm still reading what transpired in the briefing and rereading all the documents here. I will, we also have the CA. I will not ask questions in this hearing, but exercise the option of introducing amendments. And if there is a second hearing, and I'm sure there is, I may ask questions, but for the purpose of this first hearing, uh, I will no longer ask questions. Mm -mm. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Senator Legarda. And we Maybe in the next hearing, I'm sure it was not yet asked, they can address the uh, difficulties of, was it the Swedish or the Finnish uh, sovereign fund? I had Norway, I believe. Uh, Norway. Norway. The Norway uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund uh, that collapsed, that had billions uh, of losses. Was that question already asked? Uh, not, was, not yet, Senator. It was not yet asked. They may not be ready because it just happened yesterday. Uh, they may not be ready to answer it. I want to be enlightened. The difference between the Norway uh, Wealth Fund and the cause of the collapse and the effect on a first world economy uh, economy compared to a developing nation aspiring to be upper middle income, according to the president in the Van de Noord last night, and introducing a wealth fund. So maybe just a matrix of both. So I said I won't ask questions, but instead I have a request from the agencies present so that I understand. Yes. So the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Norway, uh, the source of funds, how it was created, uh, how it is managed, the composition of the board, and why it lost a humongous amount, and the reasons so that we learn from such a country and how we can uh, improve this. Yeah. Yes, so the so, committee here by directs, uh, perhaps the NEDA would be the best uh, agency to uh, uh, give us uh, some information regarding the recent happenings regarding the Norwegian uh, Fund and perhaps also they can. I asked earlier about the performance of these funds, so we can see because of course these funds, you know, the the market fluctuates. So you know, we we have to look at it in a five to ten year uh, time period. So I hope that when we analyze, we look at the uh, five year, maybe a five ten year horizon, so that we can see the the uh, the average, the CAGR, the cumulative average growth rate of. Uh, the value of these funds. So, uh, so yes, I hope we can accommodate the uh, senator and uh, uh, the secretary. It's uh, instructed to please uh, inform the NEDA and request this for the next uh, hearing, wherein we will invite uh, some more uh, contact, uh, some more resource persons. So, yeah, we will. Senator Villanueva is sure. also not here. Again, not a question. This is a request. I would like to know again in their submission that I will study and I will base my questions on this. Uh, the Securities Exchange Commission many years ago had already issued a memo on uh, mandating corporations, the private sector, 
for the repertorial on ESG. So I would know, is ESG incorporated in the Maharlika Fund? And uh, where in its provisions is ESG taken into consideration? And third request, um, so, uh, and third request would be uh, resilience. I don't speak of resilience in so far as disaster risk reduction alone, but even uh, resilience in the broader aspect with regards to uh, economic models and financial statistics. So I would like to see uh, in which provisions of the proposed measure uh, is resilience reflected. Number four, uh, I have a proposed bill which NEDA and our economic team, I believe, uh, fully support. And I would like to pass this to be passed in this Congress, I hope, because the economic team agrees. And this is the PENCAS bill. And this is a 10-year-old United Nations, um, how do you say, policy that the NEDA has been implementing, right? This is the measurement of our natural resource accounting. So I would like to see, since we're crafting uh, a law for the future generations of our country, let's might as well put in uh, all the concepts that are not in existing laws. So how is natural resource accounting mainstreamed in the Maharlika Investment Bill? So I will not ask questions. Instead, I had given assignments, requests for my further education and enlightenment. I will summarize. Natural resource accounting, this is not alien to you. Neda knows what I mean. I have a pending measure. Number two, uh, the Norway uh, wealth Fund, uh, which collapsed. I'm sure you know that. It's in the news for the past 48 hours. So a matrix so that we are educated and we uh, don't fall into the same pitfalls. Third, um, resilience. And then after I've read all of those materials, I will exercise my option to be enlightened, educated, and ask questions if need be and propose amendments to the measure. Thank you. I truly appreciate the economic team and the financial managers and technical experts who continue to help us not only with our uh, annual budget, but in keeping our economy afloat and robust. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think uh, your homework is, I hope you took down your homework. Uh, and. Uh, I hope you can uh, please, uh, uh, we can uh, satisfy Senator Lauren with, I'm sure you will give very, uh, very uh, robust answers to her uh, queries. Um, I guess at this We will submit, Mr. Chair. We're just uh, Senator Joel expressed an intention to ask questions. We're just we're just confirming if he's on his way. So if you just indulge us for a few minutes. Since Senator Villanueva is not here, uh, completuhin ko na lang. The most successful, <laughs> I can see the smile of Mina. She knows me so well. Sec Mina. Uh, last na then tatayo na ako para wala na ako maisip pang kasi nag -e evolve eh. <laughs> The most successful sovereign wealth fund in the world that uh, was the model for our bill. Can you kindly give it to us? Of course, those who crafted it and drafted it, the, or it originated from the house, must have used a model. So what is the most successful uh, sovereign wealth fund that we patterned our bill uh, after? And perhaps we compare the economies of both countries, our Philippine economy, and the economy uh, and that country of that sovereign wealth fund that we patterned after. Thank you. Tama na po yung apat o lima ba yun na request ko. Anyway, this is all for education, for enlightenment, and to help you pass the measure. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, at this point, I think, uh, at this point, we'd like to recognize Senator Angara, who's online. He would like to ask some questions. So, uh, Senator Angara, you are recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon to all our uh, guests and our colleagues. And uh, I'm having problems with my video, my computer. I cannot see the people, but I can hear it. So, can you hear me clearly, Mr. Chairman, just to check? Uh, yes, we can hear and see you loud and clear. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just, at the outset, I think we're not experts here in uh, our sovereign wealth funds. Since it's a, a new topic, a new new territory for us. Uh, so we're trying to, we're learning along the way as well. But let me say, state at the outset that uh, I support the goals of the sovereign wealth fund and our economic managers and the president in, uh, as mentioned, first, to expand the fiscal space available and to have, secondly, to have more focused and strategic spending. Uh, third is a better utilization also of idle and existing government assets, which uh, may be under or unutilized. So that's that's the the premises of my uh, increase. Uh, I think uh, we need to fine tune the measure to a certain extent, as all as do all uh, legislative uh, measures, uh, and to clarify perhaps the various uh, exemptions, privileges, powers, and functions given to. Uh, the sovereign wealth fund and its officials. So my my initial increase, I uh, I'm thankful to our economic managers for having presented to us uh, the other night, and I'll proceed from uh, some of my uh, my queries that uh, that night, um, because uh, often pointed out by some of the observers or economists is that uh, economic uh, or sovereign wealth funds are those are usually put up by countries which are have surpluses or are commodity rich and uh um <clears throat> may i ask which are the countries which fall in maybe in our typology or in our category as being neither um neither commodity rich but uh, are and neither are in a budget surplus but uh want to put up a sovereign wealth fund so sino po yung if i just like other countries we are uh, we're trying to be middle income or higher uh uh, lower income, tama ba yun? I'm not sure. But my question is, san tayo? Who, who would fall in those categories? Who are we modeling ourselves after uh, in terms of creating the sovereign wealth fund, uh, Mr. Chair? Um, Senator Angara, this is Leah. Yes, hi. Good, uh, good afternoon, Treasurer Leah. Yeah. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so, um, Yung pong, like, we touched uh, on this. Eh. We touched on this the other night, yes, but uh, we weren't really able yes. to explore it in detail. Oh. Ama po. So uh, right now, po, what we can cite nga po, uh, and we, uh, what we, uh, the example that we've been using, yung pong INA, yung Indonesia Investment Authority. Right, right. So we know um, Indonesia, they're operating on uh, both uh, deficits. No? So meron po silang uh, current account deficit and at the same time, yung pong budget deficit. But, um, but still, they were able to nag establish po sila ng uh, sovereign wealth fund and um, at the same time ang ininfuse po nung in terms of uh, cash resources nag-infuse po ang government um around 2 billion dollars and then yung pong the rest na to top it to 5 billion are yung mga shares ng uh, in their uh, government owned and controlled corporations so yung pong na yung pong naging seed funding for ina right right um, how about um, in terms of uh, Indonesia is mineral rich and uh, uh, I think they have oil also, no? How about yes. those? Do they did they also use those? Uh, I think or, or are those uh, the basis for the government corporations who contribute yes, to the fund uh, that you mentioned? Um, some of their corporations which are operating um based on their um um natural resources and in particular yung kanila pong oil uh, reserves, yung point can contribute nila sa ina. So of the five billion, how much how much would you attribute uh, the five billion you mentioned that's contributed by government corporations? Um, uh, um, on um, resource based, would you say? Um, I would say, sure, sir, mga two two billion dollars of the five. Of the five, and how would you categorize or um, uh, 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 saan ang galing naman yung yung tatlong billion, the remaining three billion? Ah, uh, yung pung two billion, yung pung national government nag uh, from their budget. The other one billion, I'm not really sure kung which uh, particular natural resource it came from, but um, maybe we can get back to you. Po, uh, yeah, sure, sure. No problem. No problem. Uh, we, we just want to really kind of uh, bone up on our research on this since it's a new uh, topic. So no problem uh, with that, uh, Treasure. Please come back uh, to us. And aside from Indonesia, who... who I mean, I um, again, another... Yeah. Another example po na based on what we uh, uh, were able to, uh, the information we got, 
Yung pong India, they have the National Investment and Infrastructure Fund. So it's a development fund. Yung pong source of capital is budget appropriation. Ang initial po, 3 billion. And they have assets uh, under management of about 4.3 billion dollars. Um, nung finan po yun ng 2015, they were operating again also on a fiscal deficit about 7.2 percent, and they also had then a current account uh, deficit of 1.1 percent of GDP. Okay, Makano, what is the value of the Indian fund now? Um. Well, again, if you don't have it on hand, you just for, uh, it's about the, no, the assets under management is about 4.3 billion right now. Okay. And how much was the contribution or the initial uh, contribution Three billion. equity by the government? Three billion. Three billion uh, okay. And how, how old are these funds, the Indonesian and the Indian funds? Yung pong si Indonesia, they had um, yung pong uh, the law passed uh, in 2019, I understand, but um, they only started operating noong 2021. Yeah. Okay. So it's very new, actually. We're using a a new yeah. fund to kind of be our inspiration or example. How about the Indian fund? Uh, 2015. 2015. So what's the average return of the Indian fund uh, in the years since? Uh, the information on that, uh, can we uh, revert to you? Na lang yeah, certainly, certainly. You can, uh, Mr. Chair, just maybe if the Secretary could help take note of the... Yes, actually, uh, there were, um, we, we requested those uh, for the funds uh, for the next, so we can, uh, they, they committed or they committed to uh, the NEDA will um, help get the information for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, Treasurer Leah, any other funds uh, to your uh, knowledge? Um, uh, Another one, la last one na to, sir, ha? Apo. <laughs> More time. Uh, Vietnam po. Um, Vietnam, okay. 2005, ang source rin po is budget appropriation. Initial capitalization was $315 million. Now, it has grown to $2.4 billion ng asset under management. And um, when they established the fund in 2005, Ang fiscal deficit po ni Vietnam was 0.95% of GDP. They were also operating on a current account uh, deficit. It's about 0.77% of GDP. Okay. Uh, nila, sir, can I just mention, ang debt nila at that time was 28.7% of GDP. In the case of India, in 2015, it was 69.1% of GDP. Right. What is Vietnam? How's Vietnam doing now? Because so they've 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 uh, gotten a lot of uh, foreign investment since then. So I suppose the yeah. budget situation has changed substantially. Oh. Yes, sir. But uh, the yung pong ano lang, the point that even when they were operating on the twin deficits, they managed to establish the fund. Got it. Right. Right. Okay. That's a good point. Um. So who are the most successful sovereign wealth funds? We're aware. Uh, Again, I'd like to be educated. I'm aware of the, uh, the GIC and Temasek of Singapore. Then we have uh, the Norwegian Fund, which was mentioned by uh, Pro Temp uh, Legarda, but which was also in the news for having lost over a hundred million, a hundred billion dollars. No, so you have in any information on that on the Norwegian uh, Fund? Uh, so yes, uh, we will. I think uh, that was an assignment from Senator Legarda. We will get yes, back yes. to yes. terms of But do you have the anything losses? at the moment? Uh, it's up on Norges. Norges, okay. Okay. It's a stabilization fund. It, uh, the source of funding of, was, of course, from the excess commodity revenues nila. The initial uh, capitalization and it, uh, in 1990 when it was established was around $200 million. The assets under management right now is $1.3 1.4 bill trillion ah 1.4 trillion dollars right so the losses per approximately 10 per 10 to 15 percent of their uh assets yeah, under but only for the for the year because of the market conditions right right and these were are these paper losses or actual uh losses as in uh uh trans they they liquidated their holdings already no, no. Baka, sir, ano lang, paper lang. Paper losses, okay. Unrealized. Right, right. 
And 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 do you know why they lost that money? What what, what were the investments? Was it uh, oh, because of the um, interest rate regime right now? Siguro sir at that time uh medyo mababa yung ano nila then tumaas ang interest rate spike. So in terms of the performance of the of the bond or the of the debt instruments of security that they not currently mm -hmm. holding, medyo nag-turn uh, negative. Okay. Okay. Um okay. I'll I'll, I'll uh, I'll just join the, my colleagues in asking for more information on the funds and perhaps um, who, where can we be categorized there and, and how, what were the success stories and the best practices of uh, some of these funds when they were being established and these are some of those which we may seek to emulate um, because uh, we're not similarly situated as like, like the Middle Eastern countries who have some of the biggest uh, sovereign wealth funds. No. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, itong, um, I'm concerned about the accountabilities because uh, earlier, Secretary Diokna mentioned um, the, how the, the funds will not be politicized uh, and the safeguards and mechanisms for that. But my other, I'd like to go to the, uh, the other side of the coin as to the accountabilities. How can we ensure accountability for, to prevent or to punish or penalize wasteful or inefficient spending? Yun ang tanong ko po, Mr. Chair. Your Honor, meron pong cap na 2% sa administrative expense, 2% of the fund. Okay, so you cannot go beyond that. Okay, so you cannot uh, misuse the fund uh, unnecessarily. Okay. But what about um, how about for wrong decisions in instance, waste or or uh, decisions which uh, resulted in losses? What are what what are what is the recourse in in those cases? Yung losses po, uh, mahirap pong bigyan ng, kasi depende rin po ang performance ng fund sa, sa economic cycle eh. Of course, the economy fluctuates, no? So yun nga, yung sin sinayot nyo kanina, pwedeng paper loss lang yun during my, for the term of a particular administration, that it could also recover. So did, hindi po pwedeng, uh, and we observe that in our uh, investment uh, even sa central bank, no? right now, yung negative yung performance ng mga funds na nag-invest na namin. But that's because of the cycle, economic cycle. But during good times, maganda rin naman ang performance. So mahirap po sabi na during bad times, ipoprosecute po natin. Napaka hirap naman siguro nun. But uh, I, I don't know what kind of safeguard you will. I, I think our, our uh, our, what we can do is just choose the best and the brightest who will manage the fund no? and trust that they will do the right thing. No? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, may I be recognized? Uh, you recognize. And I just like to point out also, I think, for in terms of uh, investment strategies and risk management, uh, as we all know, uh, you know, there's fluctuations along, but the general, when we look at a curve, it should be over a, a long period of time. When I say long period, five to 10 period, then that's how you look at the investment uh, performance. Uh, of course, there might be times when there are dips, but in general, there's an upward bias. Similar to the PSE, you know, there's a, um, you average out the uh, the returns. In general, you say in general, it goes up, it outperforms, it can outperform, uh, uh, you know, the treasury bills, right? In general, so I mean, just just for the information of the public, perhaps when it comes to investment strategies, it's over an extended period of time. So anyway, sir, yes, I we recognize. Yes, um, in support of the um, safeguards being raised by uh, Secretary Jokno. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, I don't know who's speaking because I cannot see the the person. Good, good day, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, this is Attorney Mortel, uh, the okay. Commissioner of uh, GCG. Thank you. Uh, in Thank support. You. In support of the statement of Secretary Giocno, one of the safeguards that uh, is embedded in the proposed bill is uh, the uh, Section 19 of RA 10149. That refers to the fiduciary duties of the uh, members of the board, wherein their, their uh, actions shall be guided by the principles embodied therein. So if I mention some, uh, in Section uh, 19, the members of the board and officers of GOCC shall act with <clears throat> at most an undivided loyalty to the GOCC, act with due care, extraordinary diligence, 
skill and good faith in the conduct of the business of the GOCC, avoid conflict of interest and declare any interest they may have in any particular matter before the board, apply sound business principles to ensure the financial soundness of the GOCC. And along that uh, principle, uh, your honors, uh, they are also covered with section 25 and uh, section 26 of RA 10149, referring to the full disclosure and the power to conduct audit as far as the transaction of, of MIC is concerned, your honors. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Mortel. But uh, are these not similar to the general fiduciary duties held by directors of a bank, for example? or a corporation, or, a, or an investment company? How are they different from the duties or the fiduciary uh, duties uh, held by this? Are they a stricter of a stricter nature? No, Your Honors. As far as um, RA 10149 is concerned, all the, GO, all the GOCCs under our coverage are uh, covered similarly, Your Honors. Okay. So, hindi ba dapat mas matinde yung safeguards dito sa... Uh, MIF, MIC or MIF, because precisely because you're handling huge amounts of uh, public money, which is not the case with some of our more, uh, no disrespect to them, more minor uh, GOCCs. That part, Your Honor, we will defer to the wisdom of the legislators, Your Honor. Oh, may maisip ba kayo, since you're already on deck, may maisip ba kayong uh, uh, accountability? Dyan? Would it not be better, for example, to, because the secretaries who sit on the board, for example, are bound under the Constitution not to have any other office or employment. Yung binanggit ninyong anti-conflict of interest, eh, ano lang po, parang they are, uh, they should disclose any conflict of interest. Pero yung sa, sa, sa cabinet secretaries, they cannot have any other office or employment. Those are the word, that's the wording of the Constitution. So wala nang, talagang walang, it ensures that walang conflict of interest. Would it not be better if all the directors did not have any other office or employment except to be full-time here? I just, I'm not uh, saying that's what I want, but but since we, we went down that road, hindi ba ganun mas matibay yung ganong klaseng uh, uh, panukala? We we submit to the wisdom of the uh, legislature. I'm asking your opinion Honor. because you're 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 preferring your opinion, so I'm asking for your opinion. Your Honor, uh, as far as this representation is concerned, uh, it is to the best interest of the government to always protect its state's ownership, Your Honor. And along that principle, we do agree that we have to uh, put up a stricter uh, stricter measures, Your Honors. Okay, so I'm going to ask for the recommendations of the GCG uh, and the OGCC as to safeguards. Uh, for accountabilities, Your Honor, because um, you know when under the Constitution, when public monies are paid out of the national treasury, uh, it, it is pursuant to an appropriation based on law. So there is a built-in accountability, and, and representatives are, are elected by the people. So, ako, how do other countries do it? How do they exact uh, make sure that the, aside from what Secretary Jokto said, and I agree with him, that we appoint the best possible individuals with the best possible reputation so you have their reputational collateral as an additional safeguard pero ano po yung in addition to that because yung binanggit po uh, na fiduciary duties that's present in a lot of corporations and yet we see a lot of corporate uh, misdeeds despite all of these duties so yun ang point ko Mr. Chair can anyone uh, address this in addition to what's been said already Maybe, Your Honor, you can require for the independent directors that they divest of any interest. Okay, if you're an independent director. That's a possibility, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, there was a, uh, there was a uh, something in the media which came out uh, regarding the utilization of idle or... Uh, existing government assets which are not being or which are underutilized or not being utilized mr chair may I ask if that what is the plan with respect to that uh, that aspect or that topic uh, your honor some some of the uh, assets of the government we uh, we privatize them and uh, we use them for the budget okay but some assets are not uh, listed among those which we use for the budget. For example, uh, yung Mile Long Island, Mile Long, uh, yung sa, sa Makati, and then... Mile Long, Mile Long. Oh. Yeah. Pwede po natin going source yun of, of this fund. For example, we can sell it altogether. Meron mga power 
as power plants or power, uh, like in Kaliraya, we can sell that and we can use it as part of the. Uh, so it's uh, also, uh, if you remember, kung, kung sana po, kung had we used this before, yung, yung sa, sa you know, Malampaya proceeds, that's around 20 billion eh. Nasayang lang po yun kung sana napunta po yun. Sana nagamit natin yun as part of the wealth fund. Hindi ho ba? Yun yung mga ganun. And, and we are, of course, we are opening up the mining sector after closing it for uh, more than a decade. I think the proceeds of, of that, the royalty from the mining sector, part of that can also be used as part of this malampaya. Those are the various sources, Your Honor. Uh, yes. Can we ask for a list of all these... Uh... Uh, assets that are being considered to be either sold or... Yes, yes, sir. We will provide the, the uh, list of these assets. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are the, for instance, the uh, real estate uh, owned by the government abroad, for instance, is that part of the pie that, that's being uh, considered, Your Honor? Uh, well, at the moment, we're not contemplating on using them, Your Honor. Yeah, no, because uh, I understand, don't we have new real estate in New York? That's very valuable. Are we using all of that real estate, for instance? Uh, we have uh, a building on the Fifth Avenue, and there's another uh, residence uh, somewhere in, in New York. And in Japan, we have four properties. Uh, so we, we, might, we might consider them, but uh, I don't know whether we are going to sell them at this time, right? Maybe we can... We can uh, So and it's a, if I can just interject, so and it's, a, it's an interesting idea where you sell uh, idle assets and put them into investments that uh, give recurring income yeah. rather than selling them and just using them for that, that's, that's government spending. Option. That's a very we have, uh, on Annex 2, uh, a summary of government assets for disposal. Yeah, may we, yeah, may we be furnished with that, uh, mm -hmm. secretary, please. So I think I think that's all for now, uh, Mr. Chair. Again, we reiterate our support for the fund, but the need for to really fine tune uh, a lot of the provisions uh, in the coming uh, meetings, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I if I may just uh, yes, yes, yeah. uh, USEC, uh Rosie uh, Dillon. Yes, please introduce para for the benefit of Senator Angara. Yeah, uh, this uh, hi, Senator Angara. This is uh, Rosie Dillon, USEC from uh, NEDA. Uh, yes, just yes, to yes. add to the conversation on the Norway uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund, um, actually, um, the chair is right that we have to look at it over a longer time period. Because uh, if we looked at um, uh, the past 10 years, there were two times that uh, this this fund actually um, uh, had a negative return. So, it had losses. And uh, the first one was in uh, 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 the um, uh, global financial crisis. And then uh, yung, yung very latest one was uh, yung, yung, yung last year. No? But over that period of uh, 10 years, 12% yung kanyang average return, even counting the losses. Very um, good, very good. That's a yeah. good. That's a good uh, I think that's the way, that's the correct, uh, the chairman mm -hmm. is correct. That's the, need, that's the way to view uh, these yeah. funds because, uh, you know, in business, in uh, the equity mm -hmm. markets, it's really an up and yes. down. So yes. you use a bad year as the gauge. Yeah, and and the young losses nila last year, it was really a combination of uh, the war in Europe, the high inflation rate, and the high interest rates. So th that really uh, uh, resulted in the losses. Right, yeah, but, but I think it's still necessary to uh, look at what they invested in. Uh, yes, like understand the sure. Singaporean wealth fund lost money in Bitcoin. So As we really have to look at the riskier, the riskier investments, and perhaps maybe mm -hmm. uh, place a cap on those riskier investments going forward. Yes, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, are you, uh, is that your final question, Senator? I'm done, I'm done for now, Mr. Chair. I just like, uh, I'll ask on the second round if, if uh, after hearing more resource persons, thank you again. Thank you, Senator Angara. And of course, uh, I'd like to recognize at this point. Uh, physically present. Physically present. He wanted to emphasize, he wanted us to emphasize the physical Part of that physically present, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, because I couldn't get my uh, my uh, chance to uh, speak a while ago. I was online, and uh, for the record, I was the first one on the list, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just to put that on record. That's why I went here, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon po, uh, our uh, dear secretaries. I just have a couple of questions. I've been listening attentively to the uh, discussions uh, a while ago. In fact, uh, it's uh, very important to note what uh, Senator Sherwin made the uh, emphasis a while ago about the uh, ultimate uh, risk taker here. <laughs> Walang iba kundi yung taxpayers. No? And uh, it's also good to point out that uh, investments have risks. May mga risks talaga yan. And uh, mahirap pagkaroon ng false hopes that uh, everything will be okay. Because uh, we have seen what happened to uh, a lot of countries. Uh, and that's why uh, probably I'll ask later yung mga uh, sovereign wealth fund. Um, for example, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I was looking at the uh, various uh, sovereign wealth fund uh, self-assessments that have been uh, published by the International Forum of uh, Sovereign Wealth Funds. Um, some of the cited case studies include the uh, Korea Investment Corporation. Uh, they engage in proactive communication with stakeholders, reporting monthly to uh, sponsors, issuing annual reports, making information publicly available on their website, participating in national assembly audits. The uh, KIC guarantees its independence by uh, stipulating that other entities are prohibited from uh, directly influencing or interfering uh, with this uh, entity. Yung sa Kazakhstan naman po, yung Samrok Kazina, founded in 2008, shared that um, one of the key principles of uh, interaction is that public authorities cannot interfere in its uh, operational activities or those of its portfolio companies, except for in cases provided by uh, the laws of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Some of the uh, operational activities that are the sole responsibility of the uh, superior body of this uh, sovereign wealth fund include the approval of its development strategy, appointment and early termination of chief executive of the fund, and approval of corporate governance code, among others. Now, I, I'm just laying the, 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 the predicate, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, and that's why I wanted to ask uh, best practices of uh, sovereign wealth funds, ano yung gusto nating... Uh, uh, modelong gamitin, higit sa lahat, itaas natin yung antas ng uh, transparency and accountability sa ating uh, ikikreate na wealth fund. I would like to put on record, Mr. Chairman, that I wanted to be more active here in the committee so that uh, by uh, the time we uh, sponsor it on the floor, uh, this representation uh, can help out and... Uh, 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 not just facilitate uh, smoothly the uh, deliberation of this measure, but also to make sure that uh, this representation understand clearly the uh, objectives of uh, this measure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Please, if there's any, maybe from DOF, BSP, or NEDA to answer this question. Oh, yeah, uh, Senator, um, Yeah, ano po? Yes, uh, please. Uh, Salamat po. Ma'am uh, uh, De Leon. Senator uh, Joel. National uh, Treasury. Uh, po. Uh, so, um, in, 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 in between po, when we had the uh, legislation, we've been consulting rin po yung mga multilaterals and also yung like, uh, for instance, rin po sa Milken Institute. And uh, in fact, we also have resource persons na um, they coming from Temasek, um, from Ina. Now we've had uh, seminars and discussions. So um, and even these are really the practitioners also of those institutions. Um, we also have resource persons locally who have also been very generous in their time to provide information on how these uh, sovereign wealth funds are also being run. So isa pong na uh, one, one thing that they have also mentioned to us in terms of the best practice. Yun pong mga um, earnings before nung mga nung sovereign wealth funds na na-accumulate during the previous uh, ano po, uh, administrations ng mga fund na yon, hindi po matatouch 
uh, yung pong magagamit lang po nila would be the, yung what they have earned. So, and if ever na they would want to use yung some of the resources na earlier na, na accumulate, they would have to go and uh, request for the approval of the Secretary of Finance. So, meron po mga ganong mga um, best practices and measures to ensure, to insulate po yung, yung resources that have been accumulated para it would really be put to good use. Thank you for that. No, it is important to establish accountability. A while ago, when uh, Senator Gatchelian was asking questions, uh, I'm not sure if it's Landbank or DBP saying, parang, you know, because it's guaranteed anyways by the uh, national government, whatever happens. So, parang wala kami masyadong risk. And it turned out, tama, wala nga sila masyadong risk because the risk is being uh, transferred to the uh, taxpayers. No? And you made mention about Temasek. Temasek, wrote of 275 million US dollars investments in uh, FTX, a crypto exchange, on November 30, 2022. It was reported that the uh, Singapore go uh, government has launched uh, an investigation about this regarding this matter, uh, the extent of uh, due diligence uh, that, that they have done before the uh, investment was made at uh, FTX. Um, yung recent report naman po ng international media, January 31 ito, Mr. Chairman, very uh, recent, mainit-init pang balita, yung Norway uh, Government Pension Fund Global lost a record of $164 billion, citing that the market was impacted by war in Europe, high inflation, and rising interest rates. So again, just to put on record, Mr. Chairman, this is not a simple law that we can just uh, go away with uh, uh, mechanisms in order to protect the, uh, uh, the uh, interest of our uh, people, especially our taxpayers. And uh, that's why kanina I was listening attentively, Mr. Chairman, kasi yung sufficiency of penalties, uh, siguro importante talaga na, na may ipakita rin itong... Uh, ipinapano kala natin on how we can uh, further strengthen uh kala ko may party line uh, to deter yung uh, mismanagement no uh, and and mishandling of funds kasi oh, tinitingnan ko po yung uh, uh, penalties dito enumerated in uh, this bill as presently worded uh, imposition of fines uh, Lang po eh, no? Given to directors, officers, other personnel will be uh, yung managing ng, ng uh, pondo, itong mga hard-earned uh, uh, pondo. And uh, kanina, parang, parang it was mentioned that, uh, for example, yung government uh, worker, uh, yung, yung, those who are, are in the government sector will be uh, uh, perpetually disqualified from... Uh, from uh, holding public office, no? Um, isa pa, Mr. Chairman, yung, uh, yung permanent member, tinitignan ko po, yung permanent member ng uh, board, yung pong uh, Land Bank of the Philippines and the uh, develop uh, DBP, no? But there is a mechanism under the bill to exit after five years. Uh, so what if yung Land Bank at DBP mag-exit, will, uh, uh, will they still be members of the board? Kasi if we put this, Mr. Chairman, under the law, then we need to amend the law again to uh, take this into uh, consideration. I, I hope my <laughs> it's clear, Mr. Chairman. So I wanted to ask uh, uh, that question, Mr. Chairman. Let, let me answer that. Uh, Please, Mr. Secretary. Siguro balanseado dapat yung bill. Mahirap naman na dalagin mo ng utakot na restriction. No? Kasi ang idea talaga nito is that there is a risk management unit doon nakadepende yung, yung decision ng, ng, ng board. No? Yung risk management unit, siya magre-recommend mag ng, ng mix of investment. So halimbawa, meron kang 100%. No? Siguro you can set aside 5% for risky asset at higher return. 25% for this kind of asset. So, depende yun, no? Uh, I think it's difficult at this point na tayo ilalagay natin na ganun. So, we have to respect the decision ng ganun. 
uh, kasi otherwise baka... because I understand that oh. because after oh. after hmm. the bill becomes a law lahat po ng pinag-uusapan natin dito will be part of the law no so stand po na tulad yan binanggit niyo po yan yes we don't need to put everything kaya nga okay so may mga for some semester siguro meron silang ganung part na pwede sa risky asset kaya doon nila nilagay yung mga yung high risk yes pero siguro naman in in relation to the may risky extremely risky at severely risky correct so in terms of in relation to the whole asset baka naman konti lang naman yon but Meron pong accountability. Merong oversight committee ito. You can call call the uh, the uh, fund for to to a hearing. Ganun. Merong oversight committee. Eh. That's actually what I wanted to uh, drive at because uh, so, at the end of the day, we wanted uh, to assure our people that mm-hmm. uh, Congress will still be part of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, may oversight function ng ating uh, Kamara at uh, Senado. So meron pong internal auditor. Po meron external auditor. Subject to COA. And then there's pang oversight nga, oversight committee. Uh, can I uh, go before before I, I something came up to my mind about the auditors? Yung pong uh, sa DBP at uh, Land Bank yung binabanggit po natin na uh, na yung uh, mechanismo that uh, uh, pwedeng mag-exit after five years kung mag-exit po yung uh, DBP at uh, uh, Land Bank will, will this still be part? Or, or, or mem- still be members of the board, uh, your honors? Ano siya sabi, hindi kayo mag-exit kahit anong mangyari? Again, uh, I, I'm, I'm sharing this point because if it happens, if we put this under the uh, measure, then we need to amend the law again to take this uh, into consideration if it happens. Your Honor, can I respond from this? Yes. I I am guessing that this will, this will have to be threshed out in the implementing rules and regulations or whatever will support the bill. Okay. There is no um, objection, I believe, that if the shares are removed from the corporation, then there will be no representation. I don't... Siguro yun, i-provide nyo na lang po kami sa committee para matulungan namin kayo dun sa sa issue na yun, no? Uh, Mr. Chairman, kanina binanggit ni Secretary yung about the auditors and uh, kami ni Senator Gachalian medyo pag nababanggit yung external auditor, medyo hindi gumaganda yung uh, mood namin, Mr. Chairman, kasi yung PAGCOR got a third-party auditor, external auditor, spend for 6 billion pesos, hindi makita kung nasan yung office, uh, sabi uh, ano to uh, accredited or ano by by international uh, 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 bodies pero wala tapos merong nag may bangko di ba na may bangko na nag certify na okay siya pero yung bangko na yun hindi registered dito sa Pilipinas can you imagine that so it's unbelievable and this is and this actually happened with Pagor our chief uh, gaming uh, regulator, state regulator. So, ito, yung uh, external auditor lang. Under the bill po kasi, the external auditor can be uh, can be re-engaged. Can be re-engaged. So, is, is, there, is there no limitation to the uh, to the engagement? Kasi ho, di ba, for for Philippine uh, public companies, I'm sure our chairman would know about this. Yung external auditors can can only be the same uh, for 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 five years, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we can adopt the same what we have right now for the private uh, sector, po. So you you agree that we can adopt the same? Yes, if it's okay. a best practice right now, of course, sir. You mean yun yung ilalagay natin? Yes. Okay. Sige. Thank you. So you have no... Uh, uh, of course, subject to the review of the performance of the auditor. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Where is it? Nasa engage Section 39. Engagement of an external audit. The board of directors shall engage for each accounting period or as soon as practicable after the commencement of the relevant accounting period 
an internationally recognized auditing firm to be the external auditor of the fund and to audit its financial statements. The external auditor shall be engaged annually, be eligible for re-engagement, and hold office on such terms and conditions as are determined by the board of directors. So okay sa inyo na lagyan natin ng, uh, yung sinasabi nyo ha, na uh, it's been the practice yung five years. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yung section 11 po, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, sabi ho dito, the founding GFI shall be entitled to prudential and other regulatory leaps as may be determined by the BSP to promote the financial soundness of these financial institutions while contributing to the overall objective of the uh, MIF. In Section 11 po also provides that the um, uh, yun nga po, no? yung uh, the regulatory leaps as may be determined by the BSP. So how much will the uh, Land Bank and DBP be able to invest without such um, prudential and other regulatory reliefs? Your Honor. Kasi parang yung last, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, yung sa DBP, they can only invest parang 400 million without regulatory relief. I think it was mentioned last time, last night. Yes, Your Honor. Uh -huh. that, that, that's our number. Without the relief, we can only invest 400 million at this time. So, so how will 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 they be able to invest without such uh, prudential and other uh, regulatory reliefs? Your Honor, the I mean, will this role, ano po, will 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 this role, uh, uh, I mean, would raise uh, binanggit natin to ng last uh, meeting natin na competition issues. Your Honor, if um, the regulatory relief will uh, allow the bank to, uh, will sorry, will relieve the bank from including the investment in its capital adequacy ratios. And can you repeat that again? Medyo malakas po yung, mas malakas po yung naririnig namin dito, sorry, <laughs> sa likod namin. Kindly speak louder and turn on your mic. Sorry, Your Honor. The... The regulatory relief will um, remove the investment in the in the uh, MIF in the in the fund from the computation of our risk-based capital adequacy ratio, and so with that removed, then we will be able to use the investments for our lending purposes. Yes, so that the. It, it constrains us from doing that. And without the regulatory relief, if we uh, put in the investment that is being asked of us, then we will breach the regulatory ratios. And then that's my point, kasi parang meron kayong special treatment. Uh, we were with, uh, was that, YPO yesterday. Eh? Uh, some bankers were here and they, they were uh, raising this concern. Uh, so again, don't you think there would be some sort of uh, 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 too much advantage or competition issues here? Uh, with all due respect, Your Honor, um, as a as a government bank, we although we are a universal bank and so is land bank, um, we also have a special role in economic development as we focus on development sectors which many of the universal banks do not uh, focus on. And so competition-wise, we do not think it's a, an issue. They raised it, Mr. Chairman, so that uh, it will be on the record and that uh, we, we wanted to represent other uh, uh, stakeholders in this particular uh, matter, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, isa pang gusto nating isuggest yung... Uh, Siyempre, alam naman nila, Secretary Mina, Secretary Jokno, itong uh, efforts natin to improve yung uh, mining uh, fiscal regime. No? And uh, isa sa mga isinusulong natin, yung EITI, yung uh, FOI, Freedom of Information sa mga Extractive uh, Industries. In 2021 po, yung total revenue from the mining industry is 126.4 billion using current prices, 94 billion using 2018 prices. The proposed amendments to the uh, 
remaining fiscal regime also has the potential to create additional revenue of 12 to 20 billion annually. So I'm, I, I wanted to ask this question. Hindi ba natin pwedeng uh, ito, gamitin din po ito as a source of uh, funding? Another, Mr. Chairman, I've been an avid uh, supporter of uh, the uh, 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 use ng uh, single plastics bill. Your Senator Cynthia Villar actually uh, passed this measure and we were very active on this uh, particular uh, law. Uh, huh? Yeah, yung producer's responsibility, but also... It will generate 38 billion, man. 38 billion po ito. So, my question is, ito ba? Hindi natin, or tinignan din natin as a possible uh, source of uh, funding, or why not? Uh, uh, yes, ano yes, Your Honor, I already mentioned that, that because we, are, we have opened up the mining sector, I think that some of the royalties from the mining sector can be used as part of the fund here. Uh, okay, what about yung sa single-use plastics? Sa 38 billion. Nakakailangan po ng national budget naman yung ano. Let's not uh, overbird, uh, okay. overfund this, this fund. Yes. Just yeah. trying to help, sir. Uh -huh. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, I have some other questions, but uh, it can wait. Uh, I, I will, uh, I will uh, yield to uh, some of my colleagues here who might wanted to uh, ask some questions. Uh, Mr. Chair. I, honestly, Mr. Chairman, I also invited uh, <laughs> in this particular event. So, <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, if there are no more of my colleagues who would, uh, or colleagues who would like to ask questions, uh, there being none, I would like to thank the resource persons, the uh, senators, and the staff present. I think this is a very, very productive session. A lot of good ideas came out, and a lot of issues were clarified. Uh, at this point, uh, we still have a, we still have some ground we still have ground to cover. Uh, we'll have we'll have another hearing soon, and we were we're in we will invite some of the resource persons that were mentioned by some of our colleagues earlier in order that we hear more uh, opinions from our stakeholders. So the we, we the details of the next hearing will be announced through the committee secretariat. And if there are no objections, I hereby suspend this hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to our resource persons.